Mark Fold working on his uh, Beamer Z3 convertible replacement top project. We just got the metal band that goes all the way around the back here, the aluminum band off, which leaves only a plastic sealer here. And one of the problems I'm going to be facing on this restoration project is right here. You see that little crack? That's potentially deadly. I got to solve that. I got to seal that up before I put the top back on and the metal back on. And the way I'm going to do it, guys, with black Gorilla tape should probably last longer than the plastic. Watch as I give that a try. See the crack that's right here? Two pieces. I'm gonna lay them together, put a piece of Gorilla Tape on one side and on the other, start to seal it front and back, put a couple more layers on, it'll be good as new. What a great fix for a part that doesn't exist and can't be bought, no replacement. Come see all I'm doing on this project, maybe I can help you, bye. I just got that aluminum mounting bow off way simpler than I ever had imagined. In fact, I did it in less than two minutes. What I did was take a tool like this and put it on the bottom side of where that band was and push down like this. And immediately I heard it going as the adhesive failed, gave way and I pulled it right out with my bare hands. I was done in under two minutes. Can you imagine? Go watch my video short on that. The next thing I gotta do is that I actually have a broken plastic sealer right here. I have to clean the plastic up around here. Ah! I have to clean the plastic up. Where am I? I have to clean the plastic up around here and I'm going to tape everything back together with Gorilla Glue. It's the only ho hope that I have because you can't buy this part anymore. So I'm going to be sealing this whole thing all along here. This whole thing. This whole crack. I'm going to be sealing with Gorilla Tape and see if the, it, it's just the only thing I got. That's my next project. Hey deal. Here's Mark with another, another tip for restoring your Z3's convertible top. At some point, you gotta start getting all of the old adhesive off of the bows. And you can try all different kinds of solvents. I've tried acetone, I've tried WD-40, I've tried other adhesive removers, they all suck. Wipe it all off with acetone until the bow is dry and go back to just putting on something as simple as a piece of tape. Rub it on the underside, wherever the sticky surface is, and then slowly peel it off. You're going to think that nothing's happening, but look, guys. See that black? That's adhesive. Now, it might take a couple of pieces, but eventually you're going to end up putting it on and peeling it off, putting it on, peeling it off, until when you peel it off the next time, there's no sticky left, and it's done Give this a try. Come and see my channel. Watch how I'm doing the rest of this Z3. All right, here's where we are, day one. The top is completely off. I'm almost done cleaning off these bars using uh, tape to peel off the rest of the adhesive. Just stick it on, peel it off, stick it on, peel it off. Almost like you're getting hair waxed. It's the best working. The backside's looking really good. All that's left is to take the old tarp the old convertible top off the back end tomorrow take all those staples off start putting the new top on and stapling it and then begin the assembly putting everything back on but right now i'm taping i'm taking one of my big tarps and i'm covering it over bedding down for the night in case there's a breeze in case there's weather and i don't want anything getting inside here it's not as far as i wanted to get but I've never done it before. It's not bad progress, no real problems, no deal breakers, and a few pleasant surprises. So like the whole interior is absolutely pristine. For some reason, I thought there was gonna be a lot of rust in here, something really disappointing that I'd have to work on. And instead, it is absolutely bulletproof, like right out of the showroom floor. Um, I've got a cracked piece of seal mount here. The seal, what do they call this? The seal, um, hoop um, is cracked but I've taped it with Gorilla Tape and I think that's actually going to work and I got all the gummy shit off of the bow so that there's no black mold or anything on them and they're, it's going to be putting the bands on tomorrow and then working on the top that's a pretty good day, see you tomorrow okay here's the final wrap up for the night, I put the tarp on I didn't want to weight it down for fear that would come off in the night so I actually masking taped it on all the way around and I have a feeling that's going to be absolutely fine. 
seal, sealed up nice. Cheap, throw away, don't have to worry about spending money on something that I'm not going to use again. That's it. All right, really, I'm taking the night off. See ya. Here it is, day two. Getting ready to put the new top on. There's a bit of work to be done. But everything looks like it got through the night. And the sky, that way's west. Sky looks like it's going to cooperate today. It's probably about uh, 55 degrees out right now. Let's get started. Time to put the first strap, the, the new tension straps on first. Hey guys, here's Mark with uh, another tip working on your Beamer convertible top restore. At some point, you got to get all the adhesive off of your uh, top bows. And one thing I told you yesterday was you could use tape, but sometimes there's a lot of adhesive. You can take a, a, a blade and scrape it backwards. And you see how you can actually pick all this up. You might be end up getting a little bit of the paint at the same time, but ultimately this entire strap gets covered up by a great big long piece of C plastic, a C channel anyways. So picking it all up like this and then following up with some tape afterwards is a great way to get that adhesive off without using chemicals that can drop down, hit your leather seats and destroy them. Come watch my channel, see how I'm doing on this project. Hey guys, here it is day two and we're working on still getting the adhesive off. Do you see all this stuff here? One quick technique you can use is a razor blade, tip slightly backward and you draw it like a draw knife, watch. See all that stuff comes off? Comes off really easy and underneath when you're done, it's absolutely smooth and dry. No chemicals to fall down on your seats. Just work your way down. When you hear that scraping sound, you know you're on the right track. Are you gonna take some of the paint off? Yes, but remember guys, there's a whole C channel of plastic, a clip, that goes on the whole length of this. So the, the paint that's on here never sees the light of day. That's why it looks so good. That you put a piece of cloth comes in from the top, the C channel comes on, and all you see is the plastic C channel anyways. So give this a try. See how fast it gets the adhesive off of what's really cool is when you finally get underneath there it is smooth nothing there there is no <clears throat> there is no adhesive there you're going to find out that this is actually a pretty tricky way to do stuff let me continue and we'll work on the other side hey guys mark vote here with another tip on restoring your bmw z3 top at some point you got to get all of the adhesive off that's on the underside of these rails <clears throat> You can try all kinds of chemicals, or you can use a straight edge razor blade, this like a draw knife, curving it a little bit. Listen. Look how fast that stuff comes off. And when you're done, it is smooth on the bottom, dry, no stickiness at all. You're ready to put the rest of the top on. You're going to take maybe a little bit of paint off. It doesn't matter because there's a whole plastic C-channel that clips on. And that's what you see from underneath, from inside the car. You see the C-channel anyway, so you never see this top. Come and check out my channel and see how I'm doing on this project. Maybe you'll find something that can help you. Okay, little point of confusion. Uh, I thought that the idea was that the next step is we're supposed to put... We're supposed to put this strap on, take it off down, take the, the rear bow off right there, slip this loop on, slide it all the way up, and then magically start stapling or start um, putting in a screw right here. Uh, sorry, putting in a screw right there, putting another screw in right here, and then tying it into the top. You see him popping the rivets out and everything. But what do you see that's missing, guys? I went back and watched the video a couple of times. Part one ends, and, and what we need is not there. And part two starts, and what we need is not there. The whole front header 
has not yet been attached yet. Uh, Main Jason may have attached it and then never recorded it. It's not done. So that's what we got to do next, guys. Before we put the <clears throat> tension straps back on, we got to reassemble the front here. And the way I'm going to try to approach that is I'm going to try to clamp it in against here so it's not going anywhere and then come back and put these pieces in and let's see if that works. Okay, going to wide angle so I can show you guys this. When you slip this into it, slip the front header into the top of the windshield and then clamp it in place, everything seems like it's going well until you start to let go and you see it coming off. So what can I do to hold it in place? I'm going to take some masking tape, wrap it around here, and then tape it right onto the windshield like that. And that ought to hold it up long enough to be able to get those bolts in. Let me put my hands down for a second. Actually, I'm not going to use masking tape. This is a good time for Gorilla Tape. Hold on. All right, the first thing you're going to see me do is wrap the anchor first. I'm going to end up sacrificing about this much. This I need to anchor, so I'm going to rub that on first. Then I'm going to pull this forward. Wrap it around. Tear off just enough to have a good foothold. Like about that much. I'm going to wrap it around on the inner, underside here where your hand goes. Let's see how that did. <laughs> yeah, baby. Now I can go back. Now I can go back to fitting these in place correctly. And I don't have to worry about this thing falling off. So let's get this in place. Take these two screws out. Slide it in place. Do the same thing on the other side. Let me reposition the camera. Here's Mark with another uh, video short for BMW Z3 top replacements. <clears throat> when it comes time to put the front header rail back on, you think that you're just going to be able to clamp the two clamp handles in place, passenger side, driver side, and then let go. But look what happens. It starts to slip. So what are you going to do to actually hold it in place while you get these bolts on the side? What I did was put a piece of masking tape, in this case, Gorilla Tape right here, on the window first, wrap it around, and then tuck it in on the handle side. Watch and see how it does. You'll see that actually does a really good job of holding it in place. In fact, I've already peeled it off once to show you guys. But it holds it in place really nice. Come watch my channel and see how I'm doing. Get some tips. Bye. Hey everybody, this is Mark Vogt uh, with the BMW Z3 top replacement tip again. You're trying to put the header rail on, the front header, because you're getting ready to put the straps on. And you notice that when you clamp the handles in place, passenger side and driver side, the whole thing still wants to flop down, which means it's going to be really hard to try to get those two screws in. What do you do? Watch. You pull it in place, but you'll see that I've also added a piece of Gorilla Tape on right to the very front. And now all I have to do, I've anchored it onto the, the windshield, and all I have to do is just tape it in place like this. And when we let go, look at that. How cool is that? Now I can go and focus on putting my last two screws in on both sides and all is well. Come continue watching my channel to see more tips on how you can replace your top in two days on a weekend. Bye. Uh, let's see. I'm going to adjust that a little bit. All right. Remember these markers? When I pull these two bolts out and then put this on top and put the bolts back in, that's where the bolts need to go relative to that, that outer rail. So let's move these out. Let's kind of muscle this into place. This is harder than I thought it was going to be. Looks like I have to actually loosen this. There we go.
Takes a little bit of work, it looks like. There. You're going to have to get one of them started, then the other started, then slowly tighten it. And I'm an idiot if I don't go do the driver's side at the same time. There's one. Two. Get them engaged at least three or four turns before you go to the other side. Let me go get my Torx wrench. Okay, here I am tightening it up. Guys, make absolutely sure you do not cross-thread these bolts. Why? This is solid aluminum. You cross-thread that, you've destroyed it. There's no recovering from that. You've screwed up. So turn them in. Give yourself some play because I need to get in on the other side. I'm going to leave this open. Let's go to the other side. Okay, here's the other side. Loosen these bolts up. Bring this kind of down into place. Loosen this one up. Take my tape off that I was using to temporarily hold it. Get this up and on top. Get the first bolt started. Harder than I thought. Feels pretty good. Get the other one going. Again, only a couple of turns. Be very careful here. Feel to see if you're cross-threading it. If you get in four turns and it's still turning okay, chances are you're good. Check the alignment to see if it's at a right angle from all sides because you don't get this back. That one feels snug. I'm not comfortable feels got it went in four times already I know it was tight before all right now if we pull back and go up you're gonna watch me tighten both of them in from the other side okay I'm gonna go over to that side first tighten up a little bit check for snugness and fitness come back here repeat 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 until this is on Checking the alignment. I just had a screw fall out that I set in there. I'll come back for it. I'm checking the alignment with those two little dots. Trying to get it to a point where it's getting ready to be snug. Just a little hold there. Time to get my magnet out and save the day. Be right back. Okay, continuing on this side. Snugging up. Ah, that doesn't feel right. I'm checking the bolt to see if it looks cross-threaded, see if it's torn off any aluminum. And it hasn't, but it's really nerve-wracking having it that snug. I'm going to try just switching bolts back and forth. Sometimes 
bolts have their own imperfections and while it might fit well on one side it it might be kind of trained to use one other bolt See how fast that's going in that's seven turns already yeah that went in a lot better there can be small imperfections in bolts and that was the original front I guess So much for tolerances. This one is snug. It's a snug bolt. It's not even happy in that one. All right, now we're gonna. We're still too loose to try to make any adjustments. Let's just tighten. Try not to strip the bolt, the bolt head. Trying to get it snug. There. Now it's snug. Let's turn this one in. And then go back to the other side. Looking pretty good on this side. Let me go back to that side. Let's see how they align. Right there. There. Ah, hold on. There, looking pretty good. I'll go do the other side the same way. Alright, I'm starting to snug this one up. I don't know if this thing's gonna come off one more time or not, but there's what it looks like right now. Let's see if it'll clamp in. Doesn't feel like it's engaging yet. There. This side looks engaged. There. Now we're in a place. I'm going to snug these up. Not fully just yet. I'm not cranking on it. I, for some reason, I think this is coming off again to get at the screws underneath here for this retaining cable. But I don't know for a fact. Now it's time to put the web straps on. I'm going to get on this side. 
All right, we're getting ready to put the straps on, and I think it's important to talk about orientation, guys. These straps, they look like they're oriented according to this, and you would think that this is the right one to put on this side because it's beveled, because it's beveled like that. So on the top, that's what it's going to go. But really what you got to pay attention to is the location of that rubber strap. That goes on the bottom side. That's your first orientation. That goes on the bottom. Then look at this. Because you notice uh, the stitching here? The stitching here now is actually on the top, which doesn't look right to me. I thought the strap, I thought it would have been on the bottom. And now I'm thinking maybe it is supposed to be on the bottom. And this is supposed to be up against the convertible top like that. So this is really the passenger side. Let me go move it. That means that this other one, where the, the, uh, the elastic strap goes up against the convertible top, and now I end up with the stitching on this loop on the bottom like it's supposed to be. And if I look over here, we see that that is beveled nicely to fit the front header right here. So this is the one that's supposed to be on the driver's side. And what I need to do is take that particular bolt off, slip it up in place, lay it across here and start putting the screws in. So let me go get my Torx wrench. Okay, in the video, this is the one that has to come off. It's the rear one, guys. In the videos, I think they call that a T30, but really, it's a T40. Let's lay this out of the way and take this first one off. Let's see how it is. I'm gonna need harder. I'm gonna need more leverage. Not bad. Take your time, don't strip anything. It just looks unprofessional having a bunch of stuff all scratched up. All right, I'm looking here to see if there's any washers that are going to fall off when I pull this out. So far, so good. I think I have to take... Let's see if the bolt can stay in. I'm not positive. I'm getting this oriented so the elastic strap goes up against the convertible top. This little piece right here. This is going to be oriented like that to fit the front. Everything looks good. Measure twice, cut once. The stitching on the loop is on the bottom side. And now I'm going to see if it will slip on. It's not going to slip on. I've got to take that bolt out. How am I going to do that? I'm going to push from the back with my finger. And it seems to be working. It's coming out. Get it away from the car when you take it out. I'm going to set it over off to the side, still inside the Torx wrench. I'm going to go back here, reorient this strap, stitching on the loop down, elastic adhesive, the elastic stitching up against the convertible top, and this pointy side towards the inside of the car, inboard. Let's slip this on now, and it's looking really good. I'm going to slip it up and over just to get it out of the way, and we're immediately going to put my bolt back in. finger on, on the bolt. I'm going to snug this up because it's probably the last, oh, there's going to be one other time I'm going to take that off to put the large rear web strap on. So I'm not going to kill myself trying to turn this overly tight like I'm done with it. Okay, now we just have to put our screws back in and finally put in my very first set of rivets on the very front. Let me go get the screws.
This is where we're labeling your parts and laying them out and make, it starts to really pay off. That I have two different screws, each in their own little piece of tape. I'm going to set this one off to the side. What's cool, what I like already, and what I need to go and double check. Let's see. I'm looking for the first screw hole. There's going to be two rivets here, which means this has to be one screw hole and I see it right there. I'm gonna get my piece of tape ready. I'm gonna get my screw ready. This is where it's nice having a piece of tape kind of sticking to. Gosh, I wish those weren't so rusty looking. I can't believe IBM would do that. I'm gonna insert this screw in the webbing first just for no other reason than to hold it do you see that little hole that's already there uh, i gotta double check there's actually two holes i gotta go and see which one i'm supposed to use i think i think it's this this inboard one because it lines up with this one and there's only one down here no there's actually another one over here wow Two sets of holes, two sets of holes. Why would they do that? Making you wonder which one you're supposed to use. I'm doing a little lining up here. It still looks like it's supposed to be the inboard one, the one right there. But if I do that, it's gonna be really tight. Time to go check some of the reference videos. I'm putting my screw back inside the tape. Be right back. Guys, I went around this a couple of times, watching reference videos, even going back and looking at the pictures of what I took off. Let me, let me go get the old strap. Actually, come with me. Let's go look. Here's my reference stuff laid out. This is the part that came off the car yesterday, which means it was on the back, the stitches were up. See that? The stitches were up. The elastic strap was on the bottom, underneath, not up against the convertible like I thought. And then finally, it was stitched together and looked like this. Just as importantly, if I'm looking for where the reference holes are, the reference hole is the outside one right here. Outside and outside, just a little bit ahead of the stitching where the elastic strap was. So if this is my brand new strap that's going to be on the driver's side, stitches up. There's two sets of holes here, and I still find that weird that there's one right there and one right there. And there's two stitches on this side, one right here. The best way to line them up is to put them up against each other like this and say, okay, if this is where the stitches were and this is where the original screw hole was, then that one is the one I'm supposed to use. And if I trace up here, then I'm supposed to use the outside one. Outside one here, closest to the edge outside one here closest to the edge and this is the driver's side that ends up going onto the header rail like that nice to have the original parts on the original side in the original orientation to help me make that judgment and now you see the virtue of laying parts out like this let's go put the camera back in and get ready and continue okay here we are getting ready to put this part on i've already taken the bolt off we're going to slip this on slide it up and out of the way grab the bolt put it right on the end of the torx wrench <clears throat> line them up you're going to put this bolt you're going to take this bolt out again when you put the larger uh, web on, 
So just snug it up, it doesn't have to be tight. And now, let's get lined up over here. I wanna show you how we're gonna screw these in. <coughs> okay, <coughs> I got my screws from yesterday, just like this. <coughs> I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start with the top over here and lay it right on the holes and then work backwards letting the weight of the rear bow just pull it and asking myself where is this supposed to go we know now i'm supposed to use the outside hole here and the outside hole here and i see a really nice alignment for my screw that's inside the tape i'm going to pull it out Shit happens i'm going to pull it out i'm going to insert it in the web strapping so it acts like a little screw holder to start. That way I can't lose the part. Now I'm gonna set it down inside the hole, just snug it up. There, not going anywhere. Let's do the same thing with the rear. And I see over here, It looks like there's very nice alignment where that strap is supposed to go. So I'll get my screw out on another piece of tape. Don't hold it over any crevices or holes. I've got it in my hand. It goes in the webbing, screw it through the webbing, fuck, almost lost it, screw it through the webbing, you know when you do everything right, shit can still happen, we've all had that happen. It's in the webbing now. I'm going to line it up with the hole. Drive it home. I don't know why there isn't a... It seems strange there's no washer here. Snug it up, and it's looking pretty good. I see that I can see where the rivet is supposed to go in the back. If we take a step back and just look at the general alignment here... We see that it's looking pretty good. Doesn't seem like it's a perfectly straight. Oh no, it's straight. Now I can see where my rivets need to go. But it looks like it's gonna be a stretch. There's gonna be tension on this thing when I when I pop those rivets in. Come see this. Look at the alignment here. See where the two holes are? Right there and there. And if I pull, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to put this under some kind of tension to get that eighth of an inch that's still missing before I can pop that rivet into place. Huh. I don't know how I feel about that. I guess there's supposed to be tension. The metal parts are all absolutely solid. I think I'd feel better if I actually riveted these in first and then work backwards putting the screws in, not the other way around. So I'm taking I'm taking the screws out. I'm going to put the screws in afterwards when there's a little bit of play here. That's going to make it easy for me to get the rivets in without a big a whole lot of fight. Be right back. I like this better, guys. By taking the two screws out over here, I've got all the, the tension gone, which means it's super easy for me to try to line up the two holes here. Even more importantly, it's easy for me to put no tension on, drive my two rivets in, and then I can worry about putting the screws in later. And that just seems more intuitive to me. 
All right, it's time to go and find rivets that fit this. I gotta go get my rivet tool and a couple of sample rivets. Sometimes you buy new parts. I got this over at Harbor Freight Tools for like 12 bucks. And the reason I bought this one instead of the classic one with the, the L handle was because this is the first time I've seen one that looks like it can actually rotate. So if you need to shoot something in lengthwise, you've got that ability. And that just seemed pretty cool to me. I was willing to give it a try. It comes with a set of 3 30 seconds inch rivets, 1 8 rivets, 5 30 second rivets, 3 16 rivets. I'm going to pull one of each of those out and test it inside the hole. The idea is that you want it to be snug, not tight. You don't want it to be overly loose so that the little holding head doesn't have any holding capability. We're trying to find the best fit. Let me open that up. Okay, I already visually ruled out the the smallest size and the biggest size just looking at them it's down to these middle two and all i'm going to do is put this one in put this one in and it looks like it holds really well maybe even a little loose in both holes so let's try the other one they're the same depth this one hmm almost too tight Yeah, it won't quite go in. So that already solves that. But if I get this one in, they've got almost the same size holding head. Not well, no, not really. I gotta go see if this is the one I'm supposed to be if this is the one that I'm supposed to be using. Hmm. I'd be almost be willing to clean that hole out a little bit just to get a bigger rivet in that's got more holding power on the front. Be right back. All right, this is the bigger of those two. But I told you guys it feels a little snug. No, well, that time it went in. The heck. In fact, that went in right right now, went in easy. All right, it's going to be eighth of an inch. Let me go get the rivet gun. We're going to lay this on here. Put a rivet in, put a rivet in, push the rivet through the webbing. That's going to need a little widening. That That isn't big enough to let that rivet in. There. There, that's what it looks like. Then we push that down inside the aluminum gonna be snug let me go get another rivet okay if you've never seen how a rivet gun works it's a squeeze and pull until it uh, as it pulls on this thing called the mandrel this part here it pulls on this button as that button pulls that way it actually mushrooms out this piece of soft aluminum forming a joint forming a, a connection so you start by loading it up like this and you squeeze the handle just a little bit just to get a grip now we're going to come in here and get this in place force it all the way down and then then we squeeze And that mushrooming starts until the mandrel breaks like that and now that's riveted in place get rid of any pieces of aluminum i feel that it's a little little sharp on the edge there i'm going to come back with a tiny little file and i'm going to file that right now before i forget then there's a nail the the mandrel is inside the back here you open the gun up and it actually falls out Okay, here's a little nail file, and I'm going to file that head. All of this stuff is near the cloth top, so we don't want any metal, any sharp things. That feels pretty good. I'm going to put a new piece of tape over the top, a new piece of Gorilla Tape when I'm done. 
Let's put the second rivet in. Same as before, I'm going to load it up, give it a little squeeze to hold it, push it through the webbing and down into the hole. It's going to take a little bit of work. Let's get it through the webbing first. It's only because they made that hole through the webbing just so, so small there. Now we're gonna situate it over the hole. Get the gun on top of it. Push it all in. Gotta make sure that isn't going anywhere, it's down. And then squeeze. Waiting for the break. Lift up carefully. And there we got another rivet. So now we've got this riveted in nicely. That one feels really good. Here's the leftover piece of manual that I throw away instantly. Okay, now it's time to get rid of the old tape and put on a brand new piece of Gorilla Tape to cover this up for the next 25 years. Actually, I'm being realistic. Yeah, I'm only going to be alive for 20 more years. I'll probably replace this top once in that time period. Here, we're going to lay this on. And we got a brand new piece of Gorilla Tape covering that up there. So what do we got? Let's go up. Now we got this in place. All that's left to do is actually come back here and pull this tight and put that screw in. Where's my screwdriver? which is a much easier task than trying to pull this in and do a rivet. Watch. Now I've got my screwdriver. I lay this in, pull it backwards, even tip it a little bit. There. Now while it's under tension, I just have to tighten, tighten that screw in. There, don't overdo it, guys. Same thing with this side. Oh, that went right in. This one laid right in the hole, no tension. Tighten it in. And now this goes back and we only have to put a rivet in that last one. Let's get ready to put that rivet in. Okay. I tried to put an eighth inch in here. That hole's too small. I gotta go one size down. Here's a smaller one. What's a three, 30 seconds of an inch. Let's see, looks like a perfect fit. Gonna take a little bit of work to line this up. Ah. There, went right in. I'm gonna leave it right there and get my tool. I'm going to slide. Yeah, you guys can see it. Slide the rivet gun on this way. Press in. Start to squeeze. 
let it go start to squeeze again while pressing on that head another time should break now oh I forgot to change this head you have to put the right size head on or it's not gonna pull sorry be right back well if you've never done this you uh, there's a built-in wrench on the handle take it out we're gonna take out the head for eighth of an inch set it off to the side take out the one for the next size down which is the middle one put this one in Squeeze it while you're doing this, and it's snug. <sighs> Should be ready to go. Take this piece you're not you're done with, the eighth of an inch chuck, if you will. Snug it in. And now we're ready to do this one. Here goes. Slide it in, squeeze, and we're done. Nice and smooth there. Don't need to do any more. So, the driver side tension strap looks like it's completely installed and ready to go. Let's go do the passenger side. Okay, first we do a quick test check, uh, check test. It's not oriented correctly. It's got to be oriented like that. That means the elastic strap is on the facing down towards the ground and the stitching on the rear loop is actually up and will make theoretically make contact with the convertible top and it's going to go on like that so we need to take that t40 that torx 40 off here it goes If you're worried about stuff falling down inside here, now is a good time to put a towel. I've got a towel available to me to just hide right underneath here. So there's no way, if that comes out, it's gonna roll down here and go into the, the pan, or it's gonna roll down onto the ground, but it's not going down into a crevice. So I gave myself a little safety net. Now this is off, and we'll set this off to the side. Orient this strap one more time correctly. Measure twice, cut once if you know what I mean. We're gonna slide this on, up and out of the way, over the top. Get our bolt on our finger, chuck bolt style. Turn this in. Snug it up, just snug, but not tight. It's gonna come off. And now we're ready to set up and do the front side of this one. All right, in keeping up with the measure twice, cut once theory, I'm putting my two one eighth inch rivets, double check that they're working, they are. I'll just let them sit on this tape. I have to change the chuck again on my riveting tool, I have to put the eighth inch back in. So let me do that, be right back. Okay, time for the first one, first rivet. I'm gonna wedge it through the webbing and the hole that's already there. We're gonna put it in, 
force it down. Don't hit it with a hammer or anything. You'll mushroom this the mandrel. You'll mushroom the tip, and then it won't even go in the rivet gun. That would be bad. Put the rivet gun over the top. Push down and commence to squeezing. <clears throat> Okay, get rid of your mandrel as soon as possible. Don't let this sit around, it's going to end up in a tire. Be right back. This feels really smooth, I don't need to do any filing. Very pleased. Let me go get one more rivet. You guys, I misspoke. These are 536 rivets, 536 of an inch. So some are a little bit bigger than an eighth, which is 430 seconds, but smaller than 630 seconds, which is 3 sixteenths. We're going to push it through the webbing, push it down in, You want to make sure it always make sure it goes way down as deep as it can possibly go and then start squeezing feels perfect get rid of any little metal get rid of that mandrel ASAP be right back Okay, we're doing a feel check here. Feels really good. Smooth, no sharp edges. Time for one new piece of Gorilla Tape. Covering up the edge. I seriously don't know why there isn't more than this, but it's just meant to be a skin like a mole skin between those rivets and the, the canvas top. So what do we got left? Now we just got to put these, we got to put this screw in and we got to put the screw in in the back. And this actually looks like a much better fit. Let me go get those screws. Nope, still tension that has to be done. Be right back. So we got to go get those two screws. <clears throat> and if you're like me, you're already starting to forget <clears throat> the order you put stuff in back to our reference table somewhere in the middle of the reference table I have one screw all by itself with a piece of tape and another little screw all by itself with a piece of tape super easy they're in the right area general they're on the right side the correct side I know they're single screws they're in with the webbing I'll double check the webbing here again let's see it's to the inside to the inside to the inside to the inside and to the inside of the webbing I'm gonna go get my other let's go put this up we're gonna lay this on and ask ourselves does this make sense we see that we've got up here on this side of the strap we have the stitching the stitching is right there and right the stitching is right there and right there the hole that I need then is outside a little bit it's this hole this hole not this inboard one but this far outer one is the one I actually have to use great glad I had this piece around as a reference glad it was on the correct side of the vehicle so I remembered accurately what I'm doing let's go uh, put you back inside the tripod okay we're putting the first screw in I'm gonna start it inside the hole that's already there get it through the webbing so the webbing helps me hold it and once it's there whoops my tripod's falling ah Okay, and once the screw's in, I just have to 
stretch it while screwing it in place. Going in nicely. Just snug. Remember, it's aluminum tubing underneath there, guys. Super easy to tear that loose. All right, now let's do the back one here. Let me shift the camera. Here we are with the second screw. Carefully holding it in place. Screwing it in. I'm guessing these straps must fit multiple vehicles. That's why there's multiple holes. All right, we're in a good spot. Now we're gonna line this up and it's looking really good. Still tension on this side compared to the other, but I think I want that. Screwing it in place. Snug. Now we just have to get ready for the rivet on the back side here. Hey guys, Mark Vogt here with another tip on replacing your top on your BMW Z3. In other videos, you're going to see strapping going in. What I want you to clue you in on is the stitching goes, when you're wondering how to put it in, the stitching seam goes up, the elastic goes down, and instead of screwing in this first, followed by this, and then trying to fight to get those rivets on, don't put these two screws in first, put those in last. That gives you all kinds of extra looseness, some flexibility in the webbing, and it becomes super easy to put those two rivets in. Then you've got the rivets to pull against, and you'll be able to put this screw in and pull against and put that screw in, and it goes in way easier. Come and watch my channel for some more tips. Okay, the only thing remaining is getting the, the rivet in the 330 seconds. Yeah, 330 seconds, 430 seconds, eighth of an inch uh, rivet in here. We're looking for the hole. We're looking for the hole. We're trying to get them to line up. I'm gonna try a trick here. I'm gonna use the mandrel side of the nail or the mandrel side of the rivet to try to find the hole definitively. Now I know I can push. There we go. Left, all that's left is to put the rivet in. Remember you wanna be pushing in. Here it goes. Still got the mandrel here, don't want to lose that. And that feels really smooth. There we go guys, we've got both straps in. They're correctly oriented. We put the rivets in first on the front before putting in the screws in the middle. We got them properly aligned. We've got them the right size rivets in the right places. We're ready to start working on the back side of the top. But first, I got to go take my nephew to tennis lessons. Back in a little while. <laughs> okay. I'm back from tennis lessons, everybody. And what we're going to do is start taking this apart. Because what's really confusing, if you watch any of the videos, this is a great big plastic band. And yet, they staple it. You see all these staples in the top? Well, how the heck do they do that? Look at the edge for the answer. Do you see right there? that the aluminum part is a an aluminum extrusion and in the center in the center right here is a piece of plastic that they slide in so this extrusion my neighbor would agree this extrusion probably started off straight they slipped that plastic in and then they bent it around some kind of a form tool and now you got the whole bowed piece but that's what gives you the the bed that you can embed a staple in, and it's all aluminum underneath. What we gotta do is take that first, there's a Phillips head screw right there that's gotta come out, and then we gotta slowly start peeling off all of these staples to pull the whole top off, and that's best done over there in the shade. So, uh, Maine Jason does a great job of describing his way through this. Go watch his video. I'm just gonna pull it off. I'm not gonna film that one. Guys, I'm still working on this broken part. 
And I thought I was just going to tape it up with some Gorilla Tape. But it's bugging me. The whole thing is bugging me. I'm going to actually try squeezing some JB Weld in there. And let it set while I'm working on the rest of the top. At least it would seal that crack up permanently. Hopefully. There's so much gunk and everything on there. I just don't know how well it's going to hold. But i got to give it a try. Hey guys, here's Mark Volt with uh, another short, small tip on <clears throat> uh, fixing BMW Z3 tops. I got to put some JB Weld together, which begs the question, what's the right way to mix all this stuff up? And the right way, and the right way to mix it is to take two lines of equal length. You got to mix it in equal parts. And the best way to figure out equal parts, guys, is to lay them out alongside each other. You got one black, you got one white, they're equal length. Now you just have to mix them together until they're gray. Once you get gray, you can go and start working with it. And you end up knowing that you got the right mixture. Hope that helps. Okay, the, the old cloth top and all the staples did come off really, really easy. This is that plastic insert, guys, that's actually right on the inside here. Let's see if I can get the camera to there see that plastic that's where the staples all went in and once you started pulling on a few just like you saw in uh main jason's video like you pull the ones on the end along with the screws the whole thing just goes out and now i've got to clear all of this crap off these are all the previous failed attempts to try to reseal this thing after the plastic that's on this side cracked so we're trying to we're trying to fix that. There's going to end up being a piece of 3M weather stripping that goes in here, which I think is the, the latest cure. Part number 08611, I think it is. But you got to clean this off and make a smooth surface first. So that's just a lot of razor blading. Here's Mark Vo with another little tip on how to get rid of adhesive on your BMW Z3. See this stuff down in the crack? <clears throat> watch. I'm going to start off with a piece of masking tape, run it inside there. Now I watch what happens. I'm going to peel it back and see how it's starting to stretch. Now I'm going to pull and go up a little bit and do the same thing. Pull and go up a little bit, do the same thing. And what you see me doing is I'm trapping all of that stretched out residue. It doesn't go back inside the, the groove. I'm catching it like flypaper. I'm catching it on the tape. You keep that up. And eventually, it's all gone. Give that a whirl. See how much uh, I ended up being on that one little piece of tape? Come watch my video, uh, my channel, and see how I restore this Z3. Okay, it's been about two hours, guys. But I did a good job of actually cleaning this entire surface off using masking tape. Watch my video short, my YouTube short. And what I've started doing is masking here. Now... The other two guys, uh, George and Jason, did a great job of covering what this looks like, except for one thing. They didn't talk a whole lot. They didn't show the orientation of the straps, so you get the right side on the right side, the driver's side on the driver's side, and the passenger side on the passenger side, and you get the orientation right. So I'm going to cover that. I've already finished masking this side and this side to get ready to accept the strap, which begs the question, which one's the right strap? They're oriented so the elastic is on the bottom. And then it becomes immediately clear that the one that bevels to this side is the passenger side. And it's going to go like that. Because if you were to put the other one on, it would look absolutely horrible. So this, this looks right. And then you'll see that this is actually beveled like that. To slip back on that rear bow later on so now comes the scary part I got to spray on adhesive there let it get tacky and what I've done is actually mask even even the webbing itself because I'm going to be spraying on some gorilla stuff here and this stuff is take no prisoners this is every bit as powerful as uh, the the 3m stuff so you got to be really careful where you spray it. And 
don't put it on to don't spray it and then glue everything together too fast you have to really wait until this stuff is tacky so rtfm guys read the manual on how long you're supposed to wait before you make the parts and the one thing that jason said which was absolutely right is when you go to to lay this piece when you go to lay this piece on here you get one shot so come in slow Come in from this direction. Don't come in from the top down. Come in from this direction and slowly lay it up against there. Know exactly where it's got to go because you don't get another chance. When this stuff, if, if this is the solid contact cement, when it goes on, contact cement. It cements on contact. When it's ready to, uh, it's more than even super glue in that regard. So don't mess it up. Let's spray this stuff on and I'm going to put a piece of cardboard underneath here so I don't get my garbage cans dirty. Be right back. Getting all ready, I set this all out. So I've got a bunch of shields here with this Gorilla spray adhesive heavy duty. Gorilla likes water, that's why I wanna use this. Gorilla likes water, outdoor stuff. This one, if you spray it only on one of the two mating surfaces, wait one to three minutes, it's repositionable. I don't want that. You spray it on both surfaces, uh, a decent coat wait one to three minutes that becomes contact cement it is not coming off you're gonna have to cut it off so you guys know what this looks like i'm just gonna spray here spray here mate the two surfaces together i'm gonna go get the camera set up for this okay i'm gonna spray on a decent coat one little test piece Tip needs cleaning. Even though they sell these in big hands, it's really, uh, even though I cleaned this tip, it still ended up gluing itself around this edge. Sucks. Here goes. Now I tip it upside down and try to clean it out. This can, this can still won't last very long. It's going to get clogged. All right, now we wait one to three minutes and we really count it out. But I'll also be testing this. I'll be touching it for tackiness. It's got to be tacky the whole way. I'll probably be touching it with a little toothpick. Let me go in the house and get one. Actually, I got one here. Let's set a timer for three minutes. Wait, you're my timer. Never mind. I'm going to get set up. Oh, gosh, this is nerve-wracking. I keep telling myself I put the wrong one on the wrong side. All that kind of stuff. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. This edge has to line up right there at the edge of the tape. And then I'll put staples in afterwards. Mm -hmm. Okay to peel that off. 
The other stuff can come off later. I need that out of the way. I'm watching for signs it's a solvent. Watching for signs that it's doing something horrible and undesirable with either the webbing or with the plastic. It's looking pretty good, but it's nerve-wracking because this is one of those point of no return moments where if you fuck it up, wow, you might get lucky and be able to tear it off, but it's the part, have you compromised the part? Uh, I mean, it's that kind of stuff. Um, worst case scenario, I glued in the wrong position. It won't come off. I got to cut it off. I got to order two more webs for 130 bucks again. Ouch. That, that's what kind of moment it is. All right, that's about two minutes. Time to check it. See how it's not really tacky? It pulled loose, pulled out like that. That's not desirable. That's not dry enough. Contact cement needs to literally almost feel tacky to the touch. Tacky like, tacky like, like a piece of masking tape where you put your hand on it, pulled it off, put your hand on it, pulled it off 10 times. And then what does that tape feel like after pulling it off with a little oil on your, from your skin on that? That, that, that kind of tacky. Only when this is that kind of tacky and this is that kind of tacky and you put them together, they ain't coming apart. This is what it was like before super glue. Only this is flexible. This handles uh, different kinds of materials better and it handles flexing better than contacts, better than super glue does. One more minute. We'll put staples in also. Uh, Jason had a really clever way of doing it. He put them in at a 45 degree angle, even though the original staples were in horizontal. He goes in 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, and then he comes back on the last two and X's them just to really anchor home those last two, uh, the left and the right side. I thought that was quite clever. Okay guys, here goes. I'm gonna put it way over on that side. I'm gonna come in from this side, line the bottom up as best I can. And there it is. Press it home, get it inside that groove, wrap it around the end a little bit. There is a pattern there that you can follow. Get contact underneath the bottom two, wherever there can be contact, put contact in. And now while that's sitting there curing a little bit, I'm going to go over to that side and do it. I guess you're going to follow me over there too. Okay, here goes this side. Peeling that masking tape off of this, laying that over on that side, coming in square, stretching the webbing a little bit to make sure that it fits, coming in and making contact, wrapping it over. Rubbing it in the grooves here. Get it in that groove. Okay. That's looking pretty good. Now comes time to staple it. I bought a I don't like to use air guns. I don't want the hose and stuff. 
But what I did buy was this $39 Bauer that takes the T50 staples. And this is only a four volt system that plugs in, plugs in with a micro USB. Didn't feel like it had a lot of power until I turned it on and gave it a shot. Listen. That is very no nonsense. Okay, so let's see. I gotta, you guys are kind of in the way. Hold on. I'm gonna start going 45 degree angle this way. And that's what it looks like. Let's do another one on the far end. Like I got a jam. Okay, looks like it's ready to go. Oh, got a jam. Probably something to do with putting it on glue. That can't be good. Let me go test this somewhere. Okay. Lifting it up. Then I'm going to split the middle. Then I'm going to split the two halves. Then I'm going to split everything. Then I'm going to X the last one. Shit. I hit the metal. That was better. I got to pry this one out before I put a new one back in. Hang on. Don't pull with your arm twist like this. You want it to come out gently and make sure you hang on to this and throw it away. Watch it go into the garbage can because if you don't watch it go into the garbage can I promise you it's going into your car tire. Those things are just like that. All right that looks pretty good. Let's go do the other side. All right, we're doing the passenger side. First the end. Now this end. Split the middle. Split the halves. Fill it up, split all of those pieces. and X the sides. All right, that looks pretty good. That plus the glue ought to get the job done. Time to remove all the masking tape now. And that side's looking pretty good. I have to wonder if I shouldn't put a piece of Gorilla Glue over the top of that, or Gorilla Tape over the top of that. I'll be thinking about it, guys. Just like you did with the rivets, you know, that kind of thing. I'll tell you, that stapler sure did the job. That was a no-nonsense stapler for 39 bucks. Now we just got to take the tape off of that side. I 
and it's looking pretty good ready for the next step which is to start putting the top on but it's actually looking this is worrisome I finished putting the rear webbings on and I'm looking up I can kind of see blue sky to the east so what I see a little bit of blue sky to the west but it is looking a little cloudy whatever I do I have to be able to stop instantly and begin covering up I have to cover up in five minutes if I feel even a hint of rain I'm making really good progress right now no time to be screwing up not when I'm so good at being able to cover things up and wait for a, you know, a, a better day. All right, let's go. Oh, gosh. The rest of this doesn't require... Hang on. Okay, the rest is supposed to be... We're putting the, the rear on the back bow, and that means hanging on the car is allegedly the smartest approach to doing that. So I'm following what everybody's doing. Here goes. Coming around with the bow. Laying it on the back of the car that I've long since taped. Bringing it right up against the edge. Moving my tables out of the way. When you're in your 60s, this is the hard part, <laughs> laying over the top of this. All right, we're gonna gently bring all of this over. And what I'm looking for is a little notch that represents the center. Looks like I gotta move the whole top that way a couple inches. A little bit more. Take your time here, guys. This is definitely where haste makes waste. This wants to slide, the whole unit wants to slide down inside here. So what I think I'm gonna do is actually put my pillows back in here that I was using yesterday. That seems like a really good idea right now. Let me get these screws out of the way few other things but right now pillows in there to support it make a lot of sense I'll be right back okay I got a couple pillows in there now when I bring the top up and over there should be less of a tendency to want to have the whole thing slide off on me yeah look that looks pretty sweet let's move the pillows back and help me out even more turn their direction around yeah, that can work. Now I just gotta get the top aligned. I'm looking for that little track back here. I don't think there's too, it's such a thing as too many videos showing those first couple staples. Let's go back there. Okay guys, here goes. There's my notch and there's the circular hole that represents dead center. Let me move you in a little bit closer so you can see. And here goes that first staple. This, if you flip it over, the stitches are not in the center of that rubber. You see that? There's more rubber below the stitch than there is above the stitch. So what I want to do is position my, my uh, the halfway mark is slightly under that stitch. Not in the stitch and not absolutely not above the stitch. It's a little bit below the stitch. So here goes, I'm gonna to try to, to get it so that it's either on the stitch or right below it. Hard to do, because the little button that's on the stapler is not the halfway point. All right, that's gonna to have to be good enough for now but I really want to get a little bit closer to right underneath the stitch. 
Now that's going to hold it in place. The next thing I'm supposed to do is put screws in on the corners. Let's go do that. God, this is nerve wracking. I keep thinking there's supposed to be glue there, but there's not. Okay, I'm supposed to put a little hole right in that corner and then screw a screw right into that channel because in the center of that corner is supposed to really, really, if that hole, look at that hole right there, it's a little bit below the center line. I need to find the spot that's a little bit below the center line here so that this piece actually fits inside that channel without any resistance. So my hole, I should really be going in from this side, not from this side. I'm blind looking here, but I know for a fact that this hole is a little below center, which means I got to be pointing. My hole needs to be a lot closer to like right there. Not, did you see that? Not splitting it. Not splitting it down the middle. If I went right there and dug a hole, that hole's going to end up being right about there, guys. And that would be, if I flip it upside down, that would mean that my hole in the plastic is way the hell up here. And that's not right. So let's do a little, let's do a little testing here. If that's where it's got to go, that's not even close. If I pull this away, that hole is going to end up being right there, not here. What am I going to do? I got to put this in. Bring it up as close as I can, right to the edge, and ask myself, how am I going to hit that hole again? And that hole ends up being, I think, if I pull this up flush with the front end. Nope, it's still up there. Jeepers. That means if I need this to go in the corner, I'm going to have to move this whole thing a little farther forward than this piece right here. A little farther forward than this. This is quite the dilemma, the fitting dilemma. What should go, what should be the priority? I would think the priority is that this edge should be flush with this edge, no matter what. Even if I end up having to screw a new hole in here, right into this plastic like that, brand new hole, not using this one anymore. In fact, I think that's what I'm going to do. There's no magic in this piece of, in this hole in this plastic. None, none whatsoever. So the better criteria is that I bring this edge up to this edge like that, put my hole in here, and I'm going to end up, let me drill this hole. I'll show you where in the plastic this is now. Watch. That hole was right Right there? No. It looked like that hole. Let's do it again. Everything's flush. I put that hole in. Dig it even deeper in the plastic so it's easy to spot. Let's pull this loose. There's where the new hole is. Right there. Wow, this is such an eye-opener, guys. And that's where the hole's gonna be. That's where the hole's gonna end up being right here. That this, even this stitching isn't quite in alignment with this. I've gotta to try to get that hole as low as I possibly can right here. I don't wanna cut through those stitches though. You start cutting through those stitches. It's horrible, I just got done talking and then I realized the camera wasn't recording. Here's what we got guys. If I put a hole right here in the corner where I'm supposed to, Look at where the hole ends up being. It ends up being on the high side right here. That high side means it's not going to go inside this original hole. It's going to go up a little bit high on the channel, which is probably not a bad thing, but you just got to be ready. You got to keep that in mind. My goal is that the leading edge here ought to be flush with the leading edge of this strap. That's my criteria. And there's actually a little bit of excess rubber right there. I can't cut it off because it's got a stitch in it. I wish it wasn't there. But let's get started. I'm going to make sure that it's the that track that track is in the channel. I'm going to bring it up flush. I'm going to bring it up flush. 
and we're going to put we're going to put the screw in and screw it into a brand new piece of plastic. I've already cleaned this out, so it should be in pretty good shape. Here goes. I'm not looking for a hole. I'm looking to make a new one in the plastic. I'm going to bring this back down and make sure that it's actually in the channel as I tighten it up. Don't overstrip it here, guys. Just snug. That's all we want. All right. It's as close to flush as I can possibly make it right there. This is flush. Let's go to the other side and do the same thing. Okay, here's the driver's side. Stretching it all out, bringing this part up. Same as before, there's, I'm gonna try to go in what I think is the corner here. But that corner is only the very top of the, it's only the very top of the rail, that sucks. So I think I need to move that a little bit, but the criteria is the same. Bring it in so that it's this edge right here is flush with the leading edge of the bow. That's the only thing that makes sense for a criteria. Oh God. It sucks that that ends up not being in the middle. I actually end up having to go a little bit low maybe. What to do? Everybody thinks this is the right place to put the screw. Conventional wisdom, but conventional wisdom is wrong in this case. Conventional wisdom says, I really need to put it actually right about there. That's where it needs to go. Let's put the screw in and start turning it. It's walking up. Ah. Start over underneath a little bit on the low, little bit below the stitches on my top. Your might be different. You need to look at the stitches and your top and see how it's been manufactured. But for me, it makes more sense to go slightly below the stitches because then I'm cutting my little, that rubber strip, I'm splitting it down the middle, which makes way more sense to me than catching only the top edge of it. There, I desperately don't want to strip that. There, there's where I am so far. Now what I find scary is that there's another little notch here and I have no idea what that notch is supposed to mean. I'm gonna go back and watch some reference videos. I hope this isn't supposed to be way the hell over here and that I've already punched a hole in my top, but I could have swore this is what they were saying to do. Put it right in there. nerve-wracking it's a little better be right back okay it looks like that's right what I did right here it's as good as it gets which means now I'm supposed to pull this all the way down but I'm gonna do two things before I start pulling this down prior to stapling. I'm gonna put two extra staples in right here because I think that that's a tear point and I wanna to try to distribute that load. 
So two staples are going here right now. And the second thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna come in and cover this up right here. I'm gonna cover that up with two layers, two layers of Gorilla Tape, thin Gorilla Tape. I want this to not be necessarily uh, touching all of this rubber. So I'm gonna to try to cover it up a little bit. Okay, there's what the back of it looks like, the back of that main webbing looks like with a piece of Gorilla Tape over the staples to act as a little bit of a barrier. It might bulge out a little bit, but I think, still think that's the step in the right direction. The next thing you're gonna see me do is put in a couple more staples right here. I'm gonna make sure that the, that this is in the channel. And I remember from before that the halfway point is actually a little bit below that staple, below those stitches. So I'm going to try to put it. I think the staple comes out directly below that little watt, that little pressure sensor. That looks pretty good. Both of those look pretty good. Let's go do the other side. And you see the spacing? I'm gonna leave one little bit in between there. Maybe I'll get a little bit closer, but I'm not gonna stack them up end to end. That's a little bit too much. You're making too big of a hole when you stack two staples up so they're on top of each other, like one staple like, like this and another staple right on top. I think you stress, you potentially stress the plastic out there. I'll be giving a little bit of a space like that, maybe half the width of a staple. Let's go, let's go do the other side. Okay, let's pull this down. Make sure it's in the channel. It's a little tricky. I'm pulling it with my little finger, but I'm gonna go try to position it right about there. Oh, it slipped. Damn. This one's better. There, that's where I want it. I'm gonna put one more here. There, that'll have to do. Might have to press that one in a little bit. Now, I gotta pull all of this down. Now I gotta go all the way around, pulling the top down until I feel that little, until you feel this rail. Until I feel this rail click down inside that channel, which is why it's so important that you get that channel completely cleaned out. Go and watch my YouTube short on how I actually got rid of not only all the paint flakes that were here, there was paint on here like it had been spray painted with paint. It was black flaking off, but I got rid of all of the excess glue and adhesive too. Go watch that video while I pull this over the top. Okay, that went on pretty easy guys. It took very little pressure. And uh, I made sure that it's seated right smack in the middle. This is the lumpy spot where it actually starts to come out of the channel momentarily because, uh, because the webbing is here. And what I need to do is kind of split the halfway point between the middle and this end. I'm gonna go and fix this side right here, just halfway. Looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna go look for where that, uh, I'm gonna go look for where the monster tape, the Gorilla Tape is, and I'm gonna put, halfway in between the Gorilla Tape, I'm gonna put another staple right there. Because I don't want this slipping. Remember the, that little track is, that little strip of, uh, rubber is outside the the channel at this point. I got to make sure it stays parallel. So find the two edges of the gorilla tape right there and there. I got to go right in between. That's my best staple yet. That felt really good. 
Now I'm not going to do any more on this side. I'm going to go over to that side and then start working my way around. I'm not, I am not going to go around in one direction. Um, that potentially is moving material, moving material, moving material, and then potentially you end up with a wrinkle. I'm going to go split. I started in the middle. I, I, I got the middle. I got the ends. I split that half into quarters. I'm going to do the same on that side, and then I'm going to go and split again. Each time I'm going to be splitting each of the intervals until I'm done. That way you're, you're, you've got the best possible chance that you're not putting any wrinkles in the any any wrinkles in one direction, like a bias wrinkle, I think it's called. Let's go get this other side. Hey guys, I'm inside watching <clears throat> uh, watching Jason's video, and he's putting the butyl tape on. What I wanted to point out is this: the reason it runs this low, and the reason he puts two extra an extra little piece here is that the water comes from the back side of the car circles around here which means it's coming down here it's literally dripping down inside the rail down inside the rail down inside the rail it's potentially dripping down in here and you want it to run and drip down into this cup because down inside there is the drain hole if you look way down in here that's where the drain hole is and you need this rubber you need this seal to actually be a end up being a channel where the water drips down instead of getting through and getting down into your trunk. That's something you want to look at again and again and again until you get it. You don't need this thing to go all the way over and butt up against the that front wall there. Because then there's no path for the water to drip down. Get into this, this pool, this little cup, and get down into that uh, drain hole. So I'm going to cut it off a little bit. Let's get started. All right, I'm in my car <clears throat> and doing another inspection. One thing I wanted to show you was my patch job here. I used JB Weld on the plastic here. JB Weld on the plastic here. And I'm actually super pleased with how this turned out. Super pleased how that turned out. One other thing I'm noticing is there are other different spots here where it's just a little bit dusty and dirty. And this is where that tape is going to go. Um, I might wipe this down a little bit with uh, some kind of cleaner hard to say it needs to be a clean surface to stick but ultimately water is going to come down this channel uh, down uh, water is going to come in the back of the the convertible it's going to get down inside here it's going to want to leak down in there it's going to run but it's higher here in the middle than it is on the end so it's going to run downward all the way here leaking down hitting that beautiful piece of tape and then ultimately, it's going to follow the butyl tape, go in here, and down inside there is the drain hole. Now, how do I know my drain hole's working? Look at the quality of my rear bed. I'm so pleased about this. If the water was leaking down inside my bed, this would have been a great big pool of rust after 25 years. But instead, it is absolutely pristine. So even the crappy patching job that looks like happened a couple of times on the back of my strip here, on the back of my strip, had to have actually been a pretty effective job. It might not have looked like much, but the water didn't go down into the trunk. And that was the point. So, let me go, I don't know, run alcohol over here, I guess. I'm going to run something over here and, and get rid of any little residue before I put the butyl tape on. But otherwise, Jason does a really good job of laying that out. I'm not going to try to repeat it. All right, this is a part <clears throat> maybe Jason and the other guys didn't cover enough, but you're going to see me hold my butyl tape up, go all the way until I'm two-thirds of the way over the top of this little spillway that goes down into my drain hole. Stay about one thumb width away, one inch away from the bolts that need to go back in. Just start unrolling it a little bit at a time, pressing it down a little bit, unrolling it, pressing it, unrolling it, pressing it. Papa! Papa! No, I'm busy. They want you to say hi. Hi, babies. They need you to say hi. Try to keep it as absolutely straight as possible. You don't want little wobbles in there. 
You want a nice, it's a river bottom, guys. Water's flowing. You don't want it going up and down and up and down. Try not to have any wobbles here. Hi, Papa. Hi, babies. Papa's recording a video. Hi, Papa. Hi, darling. Papa's recording a video. I get this a lot from my grandkids. I'm going right over the top here. I'm only staying about a finger width away from the bolt heads, the bolt holes right now. <clears throat> Try to keep it straight. Just unroll as you go. You'll feel it, I'll feel it pressing down just a little bit too. So it's a little bit flat. It starts off round and you're going to squeeze it so it looks like that a little bit. Let me pause for a second, set up the camera angle the other way. Okay, here we are on the other side. Hopefully you guys will be able to see a little bit better. Keep it level up here. Keep this part. Don't let anything get in there. I just got some little particle. Do not let anything touch it. Get it horizontal before you lay it down. Press it in. If you see this, if this is in the right place, then chances are this is going to be in the right place too. Turn and go. This is hard to do when you're middle aged and your glasses are always falling upside down. Wish I'd done this as a younger man. <laughs> Press. Don't let any little bumps or or anything else happen. Here, I gotta try to keep it really straight again. At some point, I'm gonna have to cut out a piece of this. Let me get my scissors. I'm not gonna be able to keep the whole roll in there. I'm gonna have to pull out a piece Try to guess the right length. It's going to need to be about this long. So I'm going to go about not bad. I'm going to cut it right there. Again, don't let it touch anything. This time I'm just going to not roll it, but just fold it like this. Try to keep this part right here even with this one if you go down like this you're gonna <clears throat> it's gonna start veering down if you go up like this it's gonna start veering up keep it right in line and you should do okay There, now we're gonna press it in with our fingers. Oh, I got a bump right here. Shit, gotta pull it out and do it again. Oh, I didn't wanna do this. This is not what you wanna do, but it does happen. Pull gently, don't tear it, don't stretch it. It does happen, don't let it touch any surfaces. Start again. Set this off to the side. I want to hold this up and away from anything. Pressing. 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 I'm watching right here to make sure this stays in line. I'm going in with my other hand. Trying to keep it horizontal at all times. When you get about two thirds of the way inside that chamber, it's okay to cut it off. Don't stretch it. I think that's a bad idea. Cut it off like a piece of black Tootsie Roll. Press it in. Go back in and squeeze all the way around to kind of press it in. Don't make it lumpy. Keep your fingers together.
don't overly flatten it either. That's equally bad. You want the pressure of the seamlets, the, the aluminum to actually do all that pressing for you. Okay. A little bit hard on the back. Now, Jason said he laid in another strip right here and ran it, I guess, about a foot. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Cut off a piece about that long, right where my thumb is. Lay this in, starting with the other end. Okay, so it looks like that. I'm going to do the same thing on that end. So here's what it looks like. You'll see there's two pieces going in. One's already got some the brown tape pulled off of it. But there's two pieces going in. And the top one ends right about there. About right here. Let me go do the same thing on that side and then we'll be done. Going in on this side, measuring it roughly about like that. Cutting it off. Putting the tip in first. Pressing, pressing lightly at first. Flattening it ever so slightly. Okay, and then I'm going to leave the covering on there. Let's go think about the next step. I think the next step is the top's going to go in. Getting ready. Okay, this is a big milestone moment. We are putting this in there. And that means the back part here first has to go in and to get as close to this tape as possible. You got to get, you got to make room for the sides to bow and then go in. Jason did a pretty good job. I'm going to go and re recover up this piece of exposed butyl tape so it doesn't mess things up. I'm going to set the camera up. I have no idea where a good camera angle is. I wish I could do it from up like this. Let's see if I can. Uh, nobody says this, but if you have one of these windscreens in the back, it's got to come out, guys, or you're not reaching any of those bolts. So this whole thing's got to get taken out and put away somewhere. I'll go put it in with the rest of my stuff. Just unstrap it. You don't need to be fancy. It goes back in pretty fast. Okay, here goes nothing. <clears throat> Hope the camera doesn't fall off. We are going to pick this top up. Bring it up and over my roll cage. Drop it down in the middle. Nobody's gonna get this right the first time, guys. Tuck everything in. Get rid of the scissors I don't need. Be right back. Last thing I need is to bury my scissors in here. Bring this up. Looks like I've got one side in already on this side. Tuck in and down. I've got to lift this up as high as possible to give me as much room as possible, as much free space as possible. I'm going to hold this up and then I'm going to try to bend and push this side in. This side looks trickier. I need all the space I can manage. And it's it's in. Just like that. Now I've got the bolts already in a cup inside. So what I need to do is lift up, 
try to set that very first bolt in place. And before I do that, I need to pull this all away just a little bit and start pulling the masking tape off the butyl strips. The sucky part about this is my top is tan and that butyl is black. So if I accidentally rub it on there, I'm gonna have a cleaning job to worry about. But I also gotta get all of this material off. most of it off not all of it finger on it but just the tip come on please come on yes now I gotta get the other side that was tough oh, hard on the lower back guys jeez this is a young man project Got to put a little bit of tension on until it all comes off. You know you got it all when it's cut off on the very end. And I've got one last little chunk here. Come on, baby. Let's see if I can get at it from underneath. Yep, I can get at it from underneath. That's trivial. Go in from underneath and you can feel it and pull it off. Okay. Oh. Time to lay this gently back over the top again. Over the over the frame. Get rid of all of this before it falls back in and ruins my life. Bring this back up and over again. And now I think this is a good time to take this, this off, this protector. Because the truth is, I gotta be able to see in there. I need light. All right, now I'm going inside. Six foot one frame, trying to get inside there and touch a bolt. Ugh. Not as bad as I thought. If you hold on to the to your uh, if you hold on to your roll bars, all right. I'm looking to line these holes up. And that one looked like it lined. That cracking you hear is my $295 oddment cover cracking. Damn it! But the first one went in. I'm so lucky, it naturally seems to be aligning. I don't have to shift it a quarter of an inch left or right. Lucky me. Then I'm gonna use my wrench. Let me show you the one that I got. Have you ever seen a ratchet handle that looks like this? that you can actually turn it so you can actually turn like this. See how handy that is for getting into tight spaces? Really tight spaces, you could just go like this. 
If need be, I'll let you know if this is useful or not. We're gonna find out really soon. Oh, my back. Hi. Everything here is shitty plastic, man. It's just coming off. I gotta get the top back up again. I gotta stretch it. The whole top started falling back inside the, the cavity and that works against me. So I gotta pull it up here. Even find a way to hold it up. Although I don't know how to do that. Maybe a couple of clamps on the sides here. I'll be right back. Check this out guys, neoprene or uh, you know rubber coated clamps and I'm going to hold the sides on so they don't fall back again. Just clamp them up gently up against the metal. Yeah, that worked out really well. Uh, take a peek. Can you see down here? Hopefully you can. Let's go back. It's more important that you're seeing what's going on back there. Actually, you can't see anything more up there. That's in. When I clamp right there, <coughs> that holds the whole top on so I can get inside a little better. Let me change the camera angle now. Okay, guys. I got all the bolts in. But I'll, I'll tell you some learnings that I had. Number one, start here. Number two, Go about to the third, to this corner. Lift it up until it's perfectly aligned. Drive that bolt in right on the corner. Don't go all the way to this one and try to get this one in place and then work your way backwards. That is a pain in the butt to try to get that aligned by feel because you're not going to be able to see inside there. But what happens is if you tie it, this middle one in first and then you tie this one, this corner one in, get it centered, get it the right height up and down and then pull it in this whole side automatically pulls into alignment and if you do the same thing over on this corner then this side automatically this pulling in the at the right location pulls all of this into alignment and then you can just go by feel you can put the screw in and you feel it go right in you'll feel it go in including the ones that are hidden back there and this this little handle guys this is a game changer for getting this done because most of the time on the easy ones it's going to look like this but on some of them it's going to be like this on some of them it's going to be like this on some of them it's going to be just like this but wherever whatever purchase you have whatever angle you've got this one can give you that grip and then you can drive the rest in but i tried putting the corners on first i thought i got this one right it turned out the whole thing, the whole bow was too high and I missed the hole completely. So then I had to unscrew the damn thing. Same thing over on this side, had to unscrew it, push it down. But to push it down, what did I do? I pulled this corner in. That was something I could do. Push down, drive that corner in, get it held. Same thing over on that corner. And then everything went a lot more smoothly. Now all I've got to do is go in there and actually <clears throat> just snug everything up, starting in the middle, Get to about the right, the same tension, and go all the way around. You're trying to push that butyl um, weather stripping. You're trying to evenly squeeze it all the way around. Snug, but not overly tight. And in case you're wondering, do you have screw-ups? I put my elbow on my oddments uh, thing, and it shattered like an eggshell. I'm out $293 shit happens it's going to happen i hope it doesn't happen to you i wish you the best of luck but stuff like that is going to happen at least the top 
isn't damaged yet. So far, so good. Let me finish snugging these in and we'll move on to the next step. Hey guys, Mark Volt with another BMW Z3 convertible top replacement tip. When you're trying to screw in all of these bolts and all these weird angles on that aluminum rear bow, you either need to be made out of elastic or you need one of these. This is a game changer. Being able to turn like that, go find yourself one of these ratchets. I'm not going to tell you where to go get it. I'm just telling you it's a game changer because it can look like this if you need to have it look like this. If you need this, it looks like you can do this. If you just need that, if you need this to start it, it's everything that you need. This is a game changer for doing the back part of the top. Come watch my channel and see how I'm doing. Evening number three, two days and a couple hours of an evening. <laughs> I mistakenly thought I was going to be done tonight. That I was going to put in that butyl pad, bolt those little suckers in, and whip all this in and go for a ride. Boy, was I wrong. These bolts are an absolute pain in the ass to get in place. But you're seeing the tips that I gave you. Go see my YouTube short on that game-changing tool, that ratchet tool. But uh, I'm pausing for the night. My back hurts. I, I'm not taking the seats out. And I've got uh, the... The crash bars in the back there, the roll bars, so that makes the, the space in the back there limited even more than that. But uh, I did a pretty good job. I feel like I really did a good job of evenly spacing everything in there. I don't think I cracked the plastic in between that was sandwiched. And that that plastic is what the, the rest of the wither stripping comes in and sits on top of. That's coming up next or soon. But uh, there's still all kinds of parts that are on the inside here. That honestly, I'm wondering what the heck those all are and how I'm supposed to put all that on. <clears throat> it's going to take a couple more evenings this week, so it's time to wrap up. It's almost nightfall, and we've had uh, some dark weather here, so i got to wrap up well every single night. This, this was a smart move. If you're working in your driveway, put a canopy on. So far, these five-gallon pails have done a great job of holding everything down, too, even in a wind, even when we had a storm blow through last night. But otherwise, you know, it's looking kind of nice. This is where you get to sit back and kind of admire things a little bit. That top, that vinyl, it looks so much nicer than the original. Feels kind of nice. You know, it's fun to start taking pride in what you're doing because this is an accomplishment. To say you put a top in yourself all alone, yeah. Let's keep going. See you tomorrow. All right, here's my last thought of the evening. <clears throat> that one was the hardest part of the entire install, was getting those bolts in the back. I swear to God, one arm is actually shorter or one arm's longer than the other at this point. That's something that Jason or George, nobody tells you. You just got to muscle through it. I've given you the tips after I did it instead of in the middle. So hopefully that's going to save you 30 minutes. But if something, even a little thing goes wrong at this point, Take a deep breath. I had two. The two outside bolts wouldn't. I, I screwed them in and thought they were in the bow and they weren't. I missed the bow entirely. It was too high. You're going to have things like that. Just, just chuck it up as par for the course. Take a break. Pull them out. Get back on track and don't let yourself get discouraged. This is going to come together pretty cool. Then here's the other half of it. All ready to go back on. There is no... I don't have this third strap that Jason's even talking about. In his video, he's talking about, oh, the, the instructions told me to do this, so I did it, and it turned out to be wrong. I don't even have it to do anything with. I don't have the strap. And I don't feel any holes. I don't remember taking it off. There's literally nothing here. No clue that tells me that there's something that's not accounted for. It literally, everything is accounted for here. Certainly not in the area where I'm supposed to be looking, right here. He said somewhere between the first, uh, the let's call it the first, the second, and the third bows. I don't feel any holes here at all. No holes here. There's no holes here. There's no holes left. 
Weird, weird, weird. Time to go back and read again, because at this point you don't want to make any mistakes. You don't want to just crack on, you know, plow on, and then come back and regret. That'd be horrible. Be right back. I found two straps. They're a part of the top, and they're elastic. Now, if you had to just use common sense, let me zoom out here a little bit. If you had to use common sense and pull this up snug, and then ask yourself, what's this supposed to do? It looks like naturally it's supposed to go up and over. And do you see those two little holes right there? Then you think, okay, that's supposed to go up and over, fold around like that, and then get riveted in, I guess. So then you got this thing under tension. And I can tell you, guys, that's not going to last very long before that gives out. That's not even going to last a year before that gives out. And if we go over on this side, let's look and see if there's another one of those on this side. And sure enough, there is. And that strap looks like it's supposed to pull forward, go up and over. And those are the two holes I said I couldn't find. That somehow this goes around like that and gets and gets uh put in what's weird is there aren't even any holes there's no uh no pre-hold pre-drilled holes on this one time to go back and reread or re-watch jason's video you know what i meant hey everybody here's markville with another z3 bmw z3 convertible top replacement tip at some point you end up putting the straps back on the car there's web strappings and then there's one rubber strap that's tied to the car needs to go up and over right there and you need to put some holes inside this corner of it before you put the rivets in you'll see people use awls and i suppose that works but not very well if you try to use a drill you're going to just twist the material up what am i using you just saw it twice use a piece use a, a leather hole punching tool tool the right size and all you have to do is go click and you made a perfect little hole Add the other one on, and now you've got perfect holes that even your rivets can fit through easily to get right into those two holes. Come and check out my channel for some more tips that'll help you together with a couple of other great videos from Jason and from George. See you over there. See you at my channel. All right, I just did the passenger side. Now I'm going to show you guys how I did this side. So I found the strap I told you about. It's this elastic strap that's actually attached to the top, to the convertible cloth. And originally, I didn't have any holes in here, and this edge was fraying. So guys, what I did, and I didn't see anybody else do it, I took a little bit of a lighter to the edge, and I, let's get down here. Do you see how it's melted? I sealed that up. You don't want that thing coming apart in a couple of the next couple of months, fraying all over the place and looking stupid. Just a little bitty melt. You know how to do that, just to seal it up and it'll be fine. Then, to make these perfect holes for the rivets, what I actually have is this leather punching tool. It's got a couple of different, it's got a couple of different diameters and I just took the one that was the closest fit, the closest fit for a rivet, put it up against the corners, just like this. Put the, hole, put the, the tool down, punch a hole in it, and now you have a couple of very perfect holes. Let me get set up for showing you guys how we're going to go and put that strap on and rivet it in place. Hang on. Okay, here goes. What you're gonna see me do is take the strap up, make sure it's going in the right direction. It's gotta go around like this, guys, and then the rivets go in. So you're gonna see me take the first rivet, place it in that perfectly made little hole now, take the tension off the end by pulling like this, come all the way around, put it in with no tension on it, get the second one in, same thing, only I'm holding on to it right now. Get the second one in. Hold them both in place. Get my rivet tool. Put it up against the first one. Again, all the tension is off the strap. I'm pulling on it with this hand right here. This has no tension on it whatsoever. Put my rivet tool up against the first one. Squeeze, push down and squeeze again. <sighs> 
get rid of your mandrel. That'll hold for just a second. Get rid of that spent mandrel so you know exactly where it is. You don't need these things floating around. Now go do the second one, taking the tension off, putting the tool down over the mandrel of that rivet, squeezing, squeezing a second time, checking to see if there's any rough spots on the head of the rivets. Looks good. Now put it under tension. And it looks so nice. Gosh. Now account for the mandrel. Throw both of them away. Okay, it's finally happened. I've reached that point where I realized that there's something about my top for $182 on Amazon. Doesn't look like the top that got bought for $350. Let me show you where. Here's the old top. There's the front. Here's the side. And along the side, there's a piece of curved plastic. This one's broken. And we recognize that one. It's got one, two, three, four, five screws in it. Mine has that piece. But this little piece of plastic that's supposed to get um, contact cemented, adhesive, and then go into the channel first, and then this comes on after it, I don't have that piece of plastic. Let me show you what I do have. I have only... Here's that five whole piece of channel. I've got that and mine looks great. But this one, there is no little windy, there's no, there's nothing on the side. It, all I can do is pull it up like this, put it in the channel under adhesive and adhesive it in place. And honest to God guys, I don't know how far that's supposed to be. What I have to do is try to see where this seam is. This seam, if this thing went in the channel, it would have gone up, then, then this stitching all right here would have been right at the end of that channel. So let's go see. If it wrapped around the end of the channel right here, then the stitching would start right there, which means what I gotta do is actually pull this snug, probably as snug as I can, right there. See that little alignment notch? That might be exactly what it's for. That I'm supposed to glue it in like that. And that's all that I get to do on mine. Then my plastic cover comes up over the top. Now what happens to the rest of this little tag end? Guys, I got no idea. And I don't have any instructions with this top. But that's the best I think I'm going to be able to do. It's actually touching some of the old contact cement. It's actually holding in place right now. So I think I'm on the right track. But boy, this is scary right here doing this part. Because if I screw this up, this is a permanent screw up like tear the top off buy a new one kind of thing if it looks bad oh god gotta just forge ahead welcome to diy projects let's go let's go get this masked to get ready to spray i'm gonna put something behind this so i can spray just a little bit i'm gonna mask off all of this i can't afford to have any contact cement on this at all so the door is going to come open Get out of the way. I'm going to mask all of this, blanket all of this, whatever it takes, so no contact cement gets there when I start spraying. Let me set the camera up. Guys, I'm rethinking this. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I've got this piece of plastic that goes all the way up and clamps everything down. I've got this little piece that I'm supposed to glue in, but if I get it wrong, I've messed it up. This piece is actually going to get clamped down by the plastic channel. So why am I killing myself trying to glue this in at all? I'm just going to leave it like that and let the channel come in, go right through it. There's going to be a screw hole there holding it in. That ought to be good enough. And that way, if I ever do need to make an adjustment here, I come back, I loosen up one screw, two screws, three screws near this, and maybe I can come in and pull it a little tighter, cinch it up, something like that. At least I've got an option. So I am not gluing this in. I'm going to proceed with putting the rest of the channel in. Be right back. And just to reiterate my thought, my thought process here, this, this can be tightened in and I could glue it, but if I glue it in place like this, I don't get to unglue it, okay? But what I can do is put it in snug like this, get this plastic channel in there, clamp it in, 
And if it works, great. But if it doesn't work, then I just have to pull off a couple of pieces of, of weather stripping and then I can glue it in. So if I glue it in first, I can't unglue it. But if I don't glue it in first, I absolutely can come back and glue it. And I think that's the right way to go in this case. I hope you guys are going to agree with me. Let's go see what's next. Let's give it a whirl. I started off with a regular wire hanger, clipped off the corners, made it about this long. All it's got to be, guys, is long enough to get through that little piece right there. That's it. It's got to go down to the end. It's got to fin in, not nick anything. Slide all the way down, come out the other end. We put the cable on there and then we pull it back in. There we go. Now we just gotta, huh. there's uh, that little piece here is bugging me. I think I'm gonna actually put it all the way back, pull it all the way through. Oh, it's caught on this piece of uh, this piece of webbing. I'm going to pull it all the way back through. I'm going to tape this grommet back on and then pull it all through and it'll be fine. Hang on. Okay. All right. You may as well watch me tape it. Here's the grommet that I can't afford to lose. That little sleeve. And what I'm going to do is tape it on so it becomes a part of the spring but it doesn't actually get any wider. I'm just gonna wrap it around like a little barrel and now it should be able to fit through. Let's try this again. We're gonna come through with my puller. I'm gonna turn it this way. I think it'll work out better. I'm gonna put this over the loop, start pulling. This time it's gonna take the grommet with and voila. Now we can take the, the tape back off. Now we can take the tape back off. Did I say now we can take the tape back off? Yeah. Take the tape back off. I'll probably use less tape on the other side. There, there's everything ready to go. And all I need to do next is put that clip back on and then it's ready to bolt in. Let me show you what I did to the clip. It was all rusty. So I just took a regular old black Sharpie marker and just pseudo painted it. So that now the only thing I left have left to do, remember this goes, um, it goes up and to the left on the driver's side. So now all I need to do is clamp this back in. Just crimp it in so that it still glides back and forth, but it doesn't jump out. And that's gonna take some very, very careful crimping where you're gonna clamp onto it with a pair of pliers and kind of roll it over to close it. Let me try to show you how I'm gonna do that. For this one, guys, you're gonna to wanna to use players that have really good teeth on it you need to get a grip and I'm going to make sure that it's the cables out of the way I'm going to start off start off with the cable in then I'm going to slowly try to turn it and it's going to take work you're going to have to work at this. It'll take you five or ten minutes on each side, a little bit at a time, to close that crimp. I'm going to squeeze it this way. Oh, that's too much. And it's going to happen. You're going to bend it ways you don't want. But I'm just going to fuss with this until I get this curved over. You don't need to see it. It's painful. All right, check out what I've got so far. In this case, guys, I've crimped it back on less than when it was the way it was crimped. It's still smooth. It still goes back and forth. But I'm, it's going to be easier to pull out next time. 
and now it's ready to actually get clamped on let me go replace it on the other side I actually haven't taken this one off yet and you see how dusty it is I haven't um, I haven't sharpie markered it either so you're gonna get to see me try to peel this off and the way I do it is to start like this and then try to bend all of this up I'm not trying to squeeze really hard that's gonna crush it I'm trying to grip it so that I can bend this out and the whole thing starts to open up watch so you're just gonna get a little bit of success at a time like that and you're looking to see if it's got a grip you're looking to see if it's starting to open <sighs> it's not gonna come at first I'm going to need to get one more pair of pliers that has an even better grip than this that I've used. Be right back. Yep. This pair actually has even better teeth on the end to really grip the bottom half of that little tube that's curled over so that I can actually start to pry. And you'll see it starting to lift up right there, starting to open. That it's curved like this right now. And I grabbed it here and I'm just trying to rotate so it opens up a little bit. How much? Just enough to get the cable out and then stop. Don't go any further because you want to be able to just crimp it in. How far? Just enough to keep the cable in once you put it back in and that is it. All right, let's keep trying. I'm going to work on the other end of it now. Try to lift that out. Same thing, you're gonna see me grip it and try to rotate like this. And it takes a little part, a little work, guys. And parts of the other parts of the metal are gonna deform in ways you don't want. Because this whole thing was. I swear it was never meant to be taken off. When you make a part like this, this is just nonsense. It's like somebody from Yugo started working at BMW. <sighs> Making progress, but these are small players. They're kind of hard to grip and I'm old. <sighs> Can you see how that's starting to open up? I can almost get the cable out a little bit more. <sighs> almost. But it's also bending. This whole thing is bending backwards like this too. It's going to happen guys. I can bend it afterwards. I think I'm almost there. At least you're getting to see this part. <sighs> and you're hearing that it takes work. So now you're not expecting it to come easy. There, came apart. Now, go and uh, Sharpie marker this and get ready to slip this through. Be right back. Okay, here we are on the passenger side. I've got my my metal tab getting uh, dried off from Sharpie marking. And I'm going to do the same thing over here to improve this. We need to tape this little grommet on like we did before. Only this time I'm going to be a little bit more clever about how much tape I use. That should be enough and it'll come off easy. Now we're going to take my retrieval tool made from this is just from a uh a hanger from the dry cleaners those throwaway ones that's all it is and let's go down inside there we go and we're going to go and hook this on try to keep the the catchy part up near the stitches up near the top also try to keep the whole thing as straight as possible when you do the pulling and it'll just go easier on you 
Try to get it started. This one's a little tighter than before. And there we go. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Get all the sharp things away from your top immediately. Slowly peel the tape off. Hopefully a little bit easier this time. Yep. And now that side's ready to go. We just got to crimp this on again, that little, uh, little tab. And this tab has been drying off. It looks very nice. See all the rust there? I'm going to try to I'm going to try to fix that with a Sharpie marker. In fact, I'm going to do it right now. You guys are going to get to, get to see it. This thing's got to dry off a little bit. Hang on. Okay, it took clamping it in a vice grips and then coming at it with a pair of pliers from un, uh, a screwdriver from underneath, starting on the edge that was already open, tipping up, working my way down, tipping up, working my way down, finally pushing in and tipping the other side up until I got it loose. And here's what we got. It's still on, it's not coming off, but it also slides back and forth. And that's exactly what we want, so we're done. The next thing is, <coughs> we actually have to feed this in and screw it down. But I'm gonna do that, it's starting to get dark out, I'm gonna do that in the morning, I'm gonna get everything covered up and we'll see you in the morning. I'm tired. Okay guys, starting with the passenger side, first thing we gotta do is put this tab back on, that's gonna go right there nothing's changed then the the cable feeds up through this hole right here that grommet stays behind and feeds from underneath the the rest of it comes down inside here and gets screwed down uh underneath here somewhere there that little screw right there i left it in place remember and it looks like i can just barely move it out of the way so i'm going to set the camera up you're going to watch me Still wondering what we're going to do with this, that there's no plastic on there. Just playing it by ear. Okay, I was just saying that if you put a flat piece right here, it's this is not going to be flush. It's going to be sticking up. This is a bump, and i got to find a way to remove that. i got to try to bring this bottom down so it's reasonably flush, and it's going to take some bending and manipulating huh. be right back need another pair of pliers what I'm trying to do here guys let me pull the camera out is that if we were to look at this do you see how this part right here is up above the surface here. This is gonna create a contact with the surface that is not supposed to happen. So I gotta bend this down so it's the same flatness as that right there. That's what you're seeing me manipulate. And it happens because, you know, it's a crappy little part that was never supposed to be uncrimped and then crimped in order to put a top on. Like I said, some vice president's stupid son-in-law is what designed this. Probably works for Yugo. Not I'm not BMW. Hey, this is gonna be tough. Even when I start to try to bend on this, it ends up being this that gets bent, which we don't want either. I don't want to take it off because it's not going to help. Maybe it is. I'm going to take it off. I'm taking this part off to bend it better. So that now I can manipulate. This is going to be hard for you guys to see on camera, guys. Sorry. But I just got to reshape this part a little bit so that there's not this lump see this hump here i got to get rid of that i got to bend it in instead so it's going to take some oomphing off camera be right back i may as well i may as well show you guys me trying get a good grip with a vice grip on one side with your channel lock pliers on the other i'm going to try to bend 
Gee, that worked better than I thought. Let's hope I didn't crimp crush it. Hope I can still move it. Well, let's try that again. That was a recipe that worked. But this jaw is in the way a little bit. Let me move it out of the way. I'll clamp downstream a little bit. See if that does it. All right, we're trying to get rid of this little dip where this comes up too high. Gee. Now it's almost too much. I'm going to go up. I'm going to measure it a little bit. Try to look at it down the edge. There. That's actually high. I don't know. Huh? All this has given me an appreciation for Jason's video. Professionally done. Guy's a pro. Now, I've actually bent it a little, maybe a little too much. We'll see. If I screw that in, come and look on this side with me. If this goes in place, now we want this piece to be flush with that piece. This piece now has got to be flush with this, and it's not a right angle. So we put it up in place. Actually, yeah, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Let's screw it in place. This is the kind of video, the, the kind of recording I think you guys want. It's a, <laughs> this is a super long video in that nobody's going to want to watch the whole thing except guys that are really doing it. And if you're doing it and you're like me, then I've been watching Jason's video. I watch 15 or 20 seconds and then I put it on pause and then I go and do that. And then I put it on pause and then I do it. So you're never going to watch this video from front to back. You know, fall asleep like 30 times. But when you're in the thick of this and you're following this video, you're going to have three tabs open. Jason's, George's and Mark's. And you're going to play a little bit of each, a little bit of each, and stay in sync as you do the top. And Jason and George are going to get you most of the way through. And then for some of those sticky ones, I hope mine's going to come through for you. And this is one of those sticky areas. So let's put the screws back in. And see how it looks. All right, come check it out from this side, guys. See how that stays out of the way now? It's not sticking up here somewhere. It's as flush as I could possibly make it. I'll bait a little loose. Let me snug it up. And that's what I think we're looking for. We need this. We need this, the outer surface of this flush or below this. We don't want it sticking out, bulging out, and making excess contact with the bottom of my top, with the, the, the cloth. So now this has to go in, and that means it's time to start pulling the whole top just a little bit tighter. So I'm gonna record from out here. And no, I don't know what I'm doing at this point, guys. I guess 
because I got to get this top pulled forward. I got to get all this tension going forward so that this cable doesn't have a bunch of bends in it. It's got to be straight. Then we feed it up and through here and come all the way over and screw it in place. There's just no slack. There. All right, now it looks like I can put this in. Wow, this is tough. Deceptively tough from uh, if you look at the videos. All right, you see that little screw right there? That's our target. Okay, taking this screw out. Putting it through the spring, making sure I can even pull this spring out far enough to reach it. There. Why? Not easy, guys. Rats. There. I don't know why it was sticking there for a second. Now it looks like I can get it in. This all looks obscured because it's hard to do all of this and get a camera on it. So I'm going to try to talk you through, but I got the screw started in the hole. Nope, I don't. And I don't want to screw it up either. There. Now, oh, look. There's two ways that screw can go in, guys. It can go in like I've got it, which is wrong. What it really needs to do is go in so that that little loop is on the bottom, making contact. I gotta screw this out. It can go in like this, but it should go in like that. So this is facing, this is flat on the bottom. So it makes a difference how you put it on. All right, let's get this in now. There. Now it's going in nicely. <sighs> okay. Whew. All right, cable's in, but you'll see that it's, see how it's not straight right here, and it's not straight right there. It's supposed to be straight. I got to get this top tight pretty soon. Ay, ay, ay. This is going to be the tricky part. Uh, uh, maybe I'll try pushing this down and putting my uh, two other bolts back in. Let's just see what happens. I'll tell you if it's going to work or not. Because this is where there's definitely going to be tension. They don't tell you about this part. This is where you don't want your top to be cold and, sh and shrunken either. You want it to be hot and warm and supple. Because this, somehow this has to pull forward enough until I see the holes line up. 
and those holes are way over here. How the hell am I going to do that? Where's the tension coming from? Wow. This is definitely a snug top, I'll tell you that. And this is the first time it's actually being under genuine tension. I gotta come up with a game plan for how I'm gonna put tension on this front and pull it without hurting it. That's about what it's supposed to look like. Oh, I think I'm gonna use my, my little clampy things. I'll show you. Let me set up. I'm gonna put up this higher. I've got a couple, but I probably need more. Okay, we're trying to work on this side now. Driver's side, same thing, guys. Got to take these two T30s off, get them out of the way. So the whole front header rail uh, is now loose, no tension. Crack them both first. Try to make absolutely sure you don't strip the head off ever because these are things that are going to get taken off and put on and taken off and put on a lot over the life of the vehicle. So don't mess with them. You don't want to have to go try to find replacements. Take it straight out and put it inside the magnetic cup. Check and make sure your marker holes are all still good. You're well marked that they haven't worn, the paint hasn't worn off. There. Now, this is loose. We're going to lift it up, get it out of the way, because it's all about getting ready to put this in right here, making sure that this surface now is going to be flush with that part, that part of the surface. So let's take these two screws out next. Take your time. Don't lose a part. Inside the magnetic cup, hear that nice click that says you're safe. Click. Now this is going to go in place, and I'm going to check it to see that this is flush. Actually, that's looking really good. But we got to put the screws in to really know. I'll be right back. God, I'm just sweating like a pig out here, and I got to keep wiping my face. Okay, we're putting these screws back in. Getting that hole to line up first. Putting the next one in. Now come with me. Ugh. You're just going to have to take my word for it that this is flush. Because I got the camera kind of set up so it's hard to move. But this is actually looking very flush right here. If you laid something flat on here, it would come down and be flat right on here too. So now it's just snug it in. Check it again. And now... Pull all the slack you can out of this. Because next, this clamp's going to have to come off. This gets folded over temporarily to expose this screw on this side. I'm going to feed this through the spring. Get 
get the grommet to feed through. Check to see if I have enough slack over here. I do. Now we're going to very carefully take this screw out. Immediately put it through this, where this is on the, the, the loop that you're putting the screw in goes down up against the surface of the front header rail. Screw it in place so it doesn't go anywhere. And send it home. Uh, I'll come, I'll bring you around for this. Okay, here's the screw. On uh, screwed through with this, the loop on the bottom. Putting it in place. Screwing it home. Making sure it engages nicely, no cross threading. There. And we're done. So now all we have to do is put these two torque screw bolts back inside here. So this gets lined up. Let's see if that's on camera. Yeah, but I'm going to switch angles. Hang on. <sighs> I, I fucked it up. This needs to go on first. Um, God. It, it's got a it's got to wrap around all of that and go underneath here. So I don't need to take this off, but I'm going to do a few things that nobody else has done so far. Over here, you'll see that they put a they tell us to put a piece of duct tape or gorilla tape on to keep the rivets from making contact with the surface of the canvas. Well, the the same rule applies right here, guys. I'm going to go lay down actually a couple of layers of tape here. I need this. All these sharp edges, they're just asking for trouble here. And this is going to get wrapped around, wedge underneath. I'm going to have to actually punch through two holes through here somehow for these uh, bolts to go through. And the, it's going to be the rail pressing against the aluminum of this front header bar this front header rail that actually pinches this in because hey there's no plastic with holes drilled in it there's nothing like that on this one but before i do that i gotta figure out 100 with 100 percent absolute certainty where this is supposed to go so i don't misalign it and i think it means i gotta take the top i gotta roll it back and start looking for some kind of an indicator mark this top even though it's been like it's like 180 bucks from a company called lab work i think it is it's surprising me here, kind of disappointing me, but everything else about it has been so perfect. There are these teeny little V notches everywhere for alignment. And so far, they've been exactly the correct place. The fit on this top has been, so far, stellar. I mean perfection. So I'm expecting when I roll this back, I'm going to see some kind of a mark in the center that I line up with a hole in the center, and then I pinch it all together, and I know for a fact that is where the top is supposed to be. And then I work outward, out uh, to the passenger edge, outward to the driver's edge. Let me go look for that. Okay, you're coming around the side with me because once again, these guys have not disappointed. I'm pleasantly surprised. Here's the front of the car. I'm trying to hold the camera up, right? If we first try to find the first landmark, where is the dead center of this bar? Guys, it's somewhere between the middle of this plate. You see this little hole right there? There is the absolute center of the plate. Great. So now we got to look at the top, and we're looking for some kind of a landmark on here to tell us where the center is. And what do you see? Do you guys see that little V right there? Little V there, little V there. There is the absolute center. So if I bring that in until it absolutely matches the square... I'm assured that my top is absolutely where it needs to be. Well done. All right, so all we got to do now, I accidentally turned the camera off. I don't know where we were. What we got to do is match that little V up right there. That little V with the center of that square. 
And now I know for an absolute fact that my top is centered. So however it plays out on that end is the way it's supposed to play out. And however this plays out over on this end, no matter what other landmarks are here confusing me, I know for an absolute fact my top is centered. I can't do this with, with one hand. I'm going to maybe set the camera up in the shade pointing at what I'm doing. Come and watch. All right, you're going to see me start to cover all of this stuff in a couple of different strips. There's all kinds of rough stuff here that's hard on a top, I would think. I'm going to try to put a cover here. I'm going to put a piece of tape over here, but I'm not going to let the gummy side touch this cable. Instead, I'm going to fold the tape over so there's a double layer there. None of it is sticky. Watch what I do. I might not get it right the first time, but I know what I want. Don't put black tape on your tan top. I'm putting it on the back side of the car. I'm going to go here, and I know this needs to go something like that. So I'm going to fold this corner over. Something like that. And then when I put it down on that cable, there's going to be just tape, no sticky part. There. Same thing with this side. I'm going to fold it in so there's no stickiness there. But that forms, I think, a superior cover, like a moleskin between all that sketchy hardware that's rough. Now it's relatively smooth. In fact, I'm going to put one more piece right there. Be right back. One more right there to thicken it up rub it down curl it around and now you've got a pretty good surface there to lay this on and i'm feeling way better about wrapping this around let me do the same side the same thing on the other side that's going to be off camera and then we're going to come back and put this in okay this is probably this is probably the scariest part of this whole video so far because i'm going to have to punch holes in something that might not recover and that means I got to take these two Torx bolts out again, stretch this over, put these, lay it into place, try to figure out where to put the holes, try to maybe press them in, some kind of a dent in with this, then come back with my, let me show you, then come back with this hole punch, but this hole punch has to be big enough to handle the threaded part of this bolt, which means it's not going to be this little itty bitty one, it's going to be that humongous one right there can you guys see that whoops can you see that and that should do it that should be plenty big enough for that to, to pass it through so let's take these bolts out this is unscripted jason can't help me george can't help me yearsling i should say i don't remember if it's george or not i've been watching jason's video more Taking these off. Getting a little black on my top already from dirty rubber. Wow. This is going to be hard to do. I gotta lift this up, pass this back, pop this back into place, figure out some kind of an alignment. I have no idea. I'm gonna have to actually try to put this in the where I think it's gonna go here. Wow. Not trivial, guys. I gotta I gotta get a seat and kind of look at this for a little bit. Okay, I came up with a plan, guys, and I think I like it. I put the screws, I put the bolts back in, right back where they need to be. 
I'm not going to try to tear it apart, put this in between, and then try to figure out where the holes are because these holes here float inside this rail. I need this thing assembled when I try to do it. So all I'm going to do is instead of trying to pinch it and mark it, I'm going to stretch it over and feel where the hole, the bolt heads are. I can feel them. And then I'm just going to mark because I think it needs to go like that. That's how it needs to go. I'm going to pinch it in like that. And now I'm going to mark that hole position with a Sharpie marker. There's one. There's another. I'm going to measure again. Maybe a little on the high side of this where I marked it. Maybe a little on the high side of where I marked it. But now I've got a place where I can punch these holes first, disassemble it, take all the tension off, put all the parts together with this in. Yeah, with this in. And then put the tension back on. And that ought to get the job done. So now, let's take those two screws off again, but let's take the tension off. Take the two screws out, punch these holes. And watch how easy this is. With this hole puncher, let's go up a little bit. Okay, watch how easy this is. With this hole puncher, I just have to come in here. I'm going to measure again and ask myself, does this make sense? I'm looking at the cloth, looking at this gap, looking at this gap, and saying, this, this is where the hole needs to be, because I don't get this back. Now I've got a hole there, and now I'm going to try to measure... Don't let the, the warp and the weave of the cloth fool you. It's this distance here and this distance here that's got to be the same. So really, my hole needs to be right about there. And it'll stretch a little bit, but now my two bolts should go inside that hole pretty well and snug this top down. Let's take these two parts. Let's take, take this apart again. I'm feeling better about this. It's always easy to do it on the one side. Let's see. Yep. It's always easy to do it on the loose side. When I do it on the tight side, the, the second side, the driver side, then we're going to find out if this whole method works or not. Let's see if this is going to fit through. See how nice that is? Woo! Get yourself that leather punch. Uh, I think these are available at any pff, hobby store. I don't know, seven bucks. You'll use it again and again on leather projects, stuff like this. Jason didn't call this out. Uh, George didn't call this one out either, but this is a game changer for the holes that you need in the webbing. We did that yesterday. And for the holes you're going to need in the canvas on the top, you're going to want this. <laughs> getting hot out like it already wasn't okay I'm going to hang on to this bolt because I'm going to need it I'm going to set the torques down wrench where I'm going to get at it easily we're going to try stretching this getting it in between the rail and now I've got to get through the cloth Jeez, no, no problem, Mark. Through the cloth. And into its hole.
Damn. Not easy, guys. Let me try to get around so you can see. Even then, it feels like I didn't get the hole in the right place because there's the, the cloth is moving more like this. Let me show you. All right, let me see if I can show you what's going on. To see how the cloth is coming around, going around, and going down. And now I've got to try to get the holes aligned. And for some reason, those parts don't want to even come close together because this piece of cloth doesn't just go over. It goes back up and then back down. <sighs> I think what I may end up... This is tough. What I'm going to end up having to do is try to pinch these two pieces together and use an awl to punch my way through where I think the hole needs to be until I get it aligned. Ah, oh, this is going to be tough. Tough. But my hole is not in the right place, that's for sure. Hold on. Okay, I marked the holes. This time I'm going to try a slightly different approach to putting a tab on. I'm going to put it in the middle instead. I'm going to use a thinner piece of tape. that has a little bit more grip on the cloth and see if that lets me pull in enough and I'm going to try to get this pulled in get these in alignment with these two holes get the bolts in and snug the whole thing up this is hard guys this is harder than the back side over here it's harder than these nuts trying to get this part done with this particular kind of top that doesn't have those pieces those plastic tabs this has been a bitch and my top is sagging at the same time it's starting to I gotta I gotta start the car up and motor it back up here be right back okay here comes the hard part trying to line all this stuff up probably the hardest part of the whole project so far is right here let me put that where I can get it. I need to bring this up. This whole top. Jesus. There. Geez, I thought I broke something. And I kind of did. The cable came out of that little damn groove. God. Cut. Talk about taking one for the team, guys. I got this all started and then realized the camera turned off. But now... Using this little tab, I am able to get one bolt lined up first, then the second one, including the cloth. I got the first one started. I had the second one started, camera turned off. I pulled everything out to start over again. Somebody better send me a beer. Oh, man. like it yes now I don't want to tighten it all up let me show you the side here guys see how see how all those parts have to come together and I've got to pull on this a little bit to snug it up as I tighten everything down not easy Let's get you thoroughly in the way while I do this. I'm going to pull, turn, 
snug, snug until it's pretty close to done. But I can feel that this now is nicely over the edge where it's supposed to be. It's on the edge of that header rail, that aluminum front header. Just like I think it's supposed to be. Nice and parallel. Not high on one side, low on the other. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm going to pull on this. Pull on this. This little piece of tape. Yeah, that should be a YouTube short. I'm going to snug this down. The scary part is, if I snug it down as much as I want, it might be really hard to do the driver's side next. I'm going to make sure that these are in alignment. They're not quite. i got to back them up. Back them both. Get them lined up. There. Now tighten them up. Evenly. You need even tightening, even pressure across that surface, guys. Not too heavy in the front, loose in the back. Then the top's going to move. It's just like uh, your five bolt pattern on your wheel. You got to evenly do it. That looks pretty good. I'm going to leave this in until the bitter end because I can just tear it off or cut it with a razor blade. Whew. I'm sweating. That was tough. And now I got to... I'm going to go try to do that side before the rest of my top collapses. Be right back. I'm going to get set up on that side. This is uh, philosophy moment time. There comes a point in any project like this where you see the home stretch. You see it out there in the distance and you want to get there so bad. But then you get frustrated by something like this trying to line this piece up with the holes inside this tab with these holes and still fit a bolt hole through while you're talking and it can't be done not with just your two hands because you need two hands just to bolt everything together and get it or to clamp everything together and get it lined up so you're going to be tempted to try to fake it you're going to be tempted to try to like cut a corner something like this take a pause Go and ask yourself, what do you got to do? In this case, I got to clamp three pieces together. And then in, once they're in alignment and I get to hold it for a moment, just seconds, I get to hold it with one hand and then my hand starts to give away. When I do that, I need, and, and I, I don't have enough, I don't get a bolt in right when I need it. Find a tool. For me, it was this little one. This little clamp is going to be my savior because at the moment I can get that alignment I can quickly come in and squeeze it, hold it in place, and now I've got the time I need to go and get those bolt hold, uh, bolts put in the right way. Watch. Okay, I'm gonna get my clampy tool ready. It's gotta be something that I can quickly squeeze. It has to be rubber on both sides so it doesn't hurt my top. And I'm gonna, oh, my top's starting to go down again. Damn, 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 hold on. fighting a battle against time here all right let's get set up right okay watch me try to clamp this correctly so I get the holes in alignment but I also get a hold on everything and this is going to give me the width I need to clamp everything together three pieces I'm going to get the cloth lined up with the holes in the front aluminum first because that's critical you got to get this alignment correctly, correct, and that's looking good. Now, I put that up against the bar and move the bar up into place. 
and try to wait for the first hole to come into alignment. It is not easy, guys. You got three parts that literally don't want to come into alignment. They need to go into alignment. Didn't hold. Shit. Whew. Take a breath. I can get I can take all afternoon to get this done because it's gotta get done right. I'm gonna try putting a clamp right here. just to keep it from falling down. Don't know if that's gonna help. I can tell you this little tab has turned out to be really handy. There, that aligned up on the bottom. Jason, you tried to make this look so easy. And maybe when you got the more expensive plastic tab part, part uh, cover with the tabs, ah, oh, it, it slipped. Need a break. I'm not going to put this on film, guys. You don't want to see it. I'm just going to keep trying until I get it. Oof -ta. Hey, guys, it's Mark Vo with another uh, tip on removing and replacing your BMW Z3 top. If you have the cheaper kind of top that's high quality but doesn't have a piece of plastic right up along this rail, you're going to need to be able to pull on this even while you punch holes in it and sandwich it between the header rail and uh, the side rail. So how do you pull on this when it's actually captured in between these two pieces? What I use is a piece of duct tape strapped on there. It gives you the ability to pull on it while you're making holes and then later you could just tear it right off. You're going to find out that's a super handy addition to all of the tips you've learned so far. Come and watch me on my channel and see how I go in the home stretch putting this top on. Hey guys, it's Mark Vogt again with another BMW Z3 top replacement tip. When it comes time to try to put this header rail and this top and the holes in this top and this side rail all in alignment, those pieces don't wanna go together. You need some help. Here's one thing that you can do to help. The holes that are in the side, that are in this side here, I marked with little white dots so I don't have to look this way to see them. Now I can see that, <coughs> that, li that dot line up with this dot and I put a clamp in here to act as a block. So now there's no way that this thing can float down or up. It stays on this block and it gives me one less thing to do so that all I have to do is pull this top in and I can actually see where I need to put my holes in and put everything in. Give that a try. You're going to find out it helps a lot. Come and see my channel. See how I'm doing. I'm in the home stretch. Okay, guys, I'm getting frustrated and I'm getting tired, but that you got to take your time and you'll think clearly. I found a way to get my two pieces into alignment here by taking one of my bar clamps, hand bar, bar clamps, and using it to create a stop. 
so that this part cannot physically go down any lower. It's always going to be in perfect alignment. And that let me actually re-pull this strap into place. And I found out that that's where the hole needs to be. And that where the hole, that's where the hole needs to be. And I like those two holes way better than this one. So I punched those holes in. And now you're going to watch me try to bring these all into alignment, knowing that I've got this thing helping to act like a stop right now. And let me, my top is sagging. I got to move it back up. Watch, uh, let me get set, situated. Okay, here's something that was surprising. Not surprising, but surprising. You read in the, you listen in the videos that people say when you put the top on the very first time, it's so tight that it takes a considerable amount of effort. You might not even be able to close it over here. Well, damn, they're right. It takes all my effort to pull right here to try to bring this down. And I'm already seeing that the seam that really was way down below the bow here is now starting to walk its way up the bow. So the part that needs to stretch, guys, is this part right in here. And you need to literally put it un under tension for a while, like this. So while I go in the house and see what's next, I think it's actually covering, I think it's putting this front rail on. Eventually, you need to know that you're going to be putting some considerable tension on this top before it finally closes. And when it does close, <coughs> <coughs> when it does close you're probably going to want to leave it in the sunlight for a long time and let that top stretch wow nice looking though all right okay next thing we got to do is pull these corners around and screw them in place and what i need to do guys is pull this piece through as well and actually pull it in like that and I'm not going to glue it in I'm going to see what happens maybe I'll need to glue it in later like we talked about but for now I'm not going to glue it in so the next thing is to pull these corners around and in and screw those six screws in and my screws are over there on the parts table uh, Jason did a great job on that one I can't see if something happens and you guys need and there's something I think you guys need to see then I'll film it otherwise home stretch hey everybody it's mark Vo with a bmw z3 top replacement tip again i'm about to put these little screws in over on this side there were five of them and that was a couple of days ago one way to keep track of all of your parts is to throw them all into buckets and label them but what works better for me is to actually just tape them all inside a piece of tape like this that way you get the idea that they're supposed to be in alignment. They're on this side of the car. The other ones that are on the driver's side are on this side of the car. All of the different screws are taped to different parts of the that they need to get connected to. So you don't lose track of them and you know exactly where they go. See if that tip helps you. Come and check out my channel. We're in the home stretch, guys. Okay, I did both sides of the inside rails. One little screw in there holding it. We're going to have to see if this is right. Those all went in pretty well. Um, on this bottom one, though, I had trouble trying to get it all the way in. I ended up buying a slightly bigger screw. Let me show you. I went and bought a couple like this, which compared to the originals, look like that. Then I clipped this little nose off. Now, you're going to be tempted to want to use these everywhere simply because... They got a little bit bigger thread. They got a little bit bigger purchase. But guys, right underneath here, wherever the screw is, there's potentially you're going to be touching the canvas. You don't want to do that. Only on the very bottom did that actually work. All the other ones, you pull it in, you clamp it in place, try to find the hole, put it in, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle until it works. So now this is the last, the next big piece. And I'm going to follow Jason's rule. Jason said tape and mask everything. You do not want that contact cement getting anywhere. So everything's going to get covered with a blanket. Be right back. There's something I want to show you guys so far that I'm pretty proud of. And that is the alignment. If you remember, there is a little notch that represents the dead center. But you'll also see right there is the dead center. And you'll see... That dead center 
absolutely matches up. So I'm pretty pleased with that right now. That's dead center. And that, you see the little groove there? That dead center, right over, they match up. Now, I've got marks here that say, here's where the top is supposed to go. But guys, this is the surface that we're supposed to mate to, and that's the stuff we're supposed to glue on to. So I'm gonna be spraying this right here, not the canvas, and I'm gonna be spraying this area right, right here. It's supposed to curve over like that, curve over like that, so that that mating plastic fits right on this sticky stuff. Not any further, however tempting that might be, I think it's a bad idea. I wanna actually mate those two surfaces together, nothing more like that. That's what's gonna be. And this, this is the marking for the face plate. That's where the face plate goes. It, it's not that my canvas came all the way down like this. Actually, I had dots in one area and lines in the other. And the line, yeah, the line, the line meant one thing. Anyway, you see this face plate. God, I got to go look up. Now I'm now I'm confused again. I've got this tab and it looks like it was glued on here before, but that could be where it's supposed to go. Yeah. Yeah, like that. So I'll be spraying all of this surface and this surface right here. But uh, that means I'm going to be masking off everything else. So let me get started. Okay, I have masked off everything. There's a little bit of a breeze starting to blow that way. I'm not happy about that. It only started. But now I've got everything on the inside where I'm going to hit and everything on the outside that I'm going to touch. That outside surface is all masked off. And now the whole bottom is falling apart. I got to wedge it back up. Ugh! All right, take two. I've got this up. I've got everything masked off. I should be able to shoot up inside there and not get anywhere else. I think I'm going to mask this too. Ugh, I'll be right back. Okay, now it looks better. We've got the entire, everything that's exposed here is supposed to be exposed and is supposed to take adhesive. When I do the sides, absolutely do not come in from here. Go only this way. You're shooting spray off that way. Cover up the side of the car. We got to spray all these surfaces, both sides. Let it sit for three minutes. Time to go shake the can. You're not going to see me do that spraying. It's just, uh, it's too important to try to distract myself by trying to film it, guys. Sorry. Be right back. Okay, I got an even spray on, waiting for three minutes. I'm going to start in the absolute center, roll it over, make the connection, move on. I'm a little unhappy that I got some overspray on there. I don't think that was a good idea. I think the top needs to be able to stretch. And that little bit right there is going to end up gluing itself to the top of the header rail. Bad move, Mark. Ah, I'm a little mad, but it's the best I could do. What I'm going to do is fold this surface down, right down onto that surface right here and then work my way out from the center. So I'm gonna be looking for that little, that little notch, where is it? This one right here, and I'll be putting it on. In the meantime, it's okay for me to peel off the back here. I don't need this masking on anymore. It's actually gonna be a, a hindrance, not a help. So I'm gonna get this part off. In fact, all of this masking can come off now. I got to get everything out of the way. I'll leave it like this. No, I won't. I'll take that little spike off. You just have to make sure you don't touch anything, guys. Because if you do, hey, you're going to be glued to it.
there and there. Now I can straddle right inside here to get in the middle and slowly work my way around. I've got a three minute timer already running. So as soon as the three minutes goes ding, 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 it's gonna be time to start putting it on. And I guess I'll set up over here. Okay guys, that's three minutes. Here goes. Got to get this lined up. Right down there. And then work my way out. Ah, it's curving a little bit. I'm encountering a little bit of wrinkling. Oh, probably because I need to pull up on this. Damn. Luckily, it's still giving me a little bit of a little bit of grace here. Peeling it back up and putting it back on again. <sighs> Trying to get more to the outside, but I am encountering some some curving. And guys, I don't know what to make of it. Oh, my fingers are cramping up. It's wrinkling, guys. It's wrinkling all across here. I don't get it. It's almost like that's too far, even though that was how the last one was. It's too far. I'm going to start over again, lifting this up. I guess it looks okay on the sides, but it's not, this stuff doesn't cling quite as permanently as that other adhesive, the 3M. So it's actually working to my advantage. It's letting me do a little shaping here. Do a little, do a little repositioning. Let me keep at it. You guys keep watching. I was really dehydrated today. My fingers are just cramping up, trying to clip like this. And I think the next thing I'm supposed to be putting on is that faceplate, so I'm going to go get that ready. All right, here's a little bit about the top. Here's how close I can get it. 
See that? Now that's just to center it. I got to get a half an inch. And if I get that half an inch, then it's going to pull it in another inch to seal it. What I want you to pay attention to is this. This back strap is the thing that's the tightest. See how it tightens up when I when I push forward? It tightens up right there and it's not loose enough. But everything else seems to look really good. Hey everybody, happy Sunday. We are in the home home stretch. It took three people, me, my youngest daughter, and her boyfriend that works out to pull that top down and to get it clamped. Me pushing forward right here, pushing that way, and the two of them catching this one in first, catching that corner in first, and then clamping it in place. Good Lord, but look how tight this is now. That is what that top is supposed to look like. Woo-woo! Sometimes you just got to ask for help. Now we're going to let that bacon stretch in the sun. I don't even know if I'm going to take it off for the next week. Honest to God. Gee whiz. Look at that. How cool. I'm super pleased right now. I've got... The only thing left to do, guys, weather stripping here. This little piece of weather stripping down in there. And clamp those on. And honest to God... You don't spray that stuff. You don't spray stuff inside there on that cloth. That's going to get brushed on, clamped in, but it's only going to happen after I've stretched this top out, I don't know, for a couple weeks. I might not do it till next year. I need that top to stretch before I pull those pieces down, those tabs, these right here. It's not get it done and start driving. Anyway, time to get some breakfast. And there's what it looks like with the top tied down, guys. <laughs> it took three people. It took me pushing forward right here while my daughter pulled on this side and her boyfriend pulled on that side, pulled in and locked it. This has got to stretch in the sun. It looks like, I mean, the proof's in the pudding, guys. It looks great. Do you see how there's no significant wrinkles? I can live with this. Look at this, listen. All the way around. I am super happy with it. But like I told you before, this stuff, I'm not putting any of that in, not now. It just seems to me that'd be a super bad idea. This top's got to stretch. It's 82 degrees here west of Chicago. I'm putting it out in the middle of the cul-de-sac, and that is baking. I am going to let that bake over on the far side of the neighbors, where it's baking with the whole backside facing the sun that way. And I'm going to just go off and, I don't know, fish or play tennis or something. This is not going to finish today. This top's got to stretch. Otherwise, the next time I pop it off and let it down, and then I try to pull it back up, I might not be able to do it. It's got to stretch before you do the rest of this stuff. I might not get to the rest of this until this coming weekend. It doesn't matter. You got to do what the top needs, not what your schedule demands. So let's just bring it in. Let's just put it out in the cul-de-sac. Okay, that's the sun. It's going to be going down like that, which means it should be sitting on this top literally all afternoon, baking that top and letting it stretch, letting it give. <laughs> Looking pretty good. Time to go do something else. Back later. Okay, 20 minutes later, I'm done. But I'll tell you, I did a few things different. I put the clip, those end clips, I put it right on the rubber and rammed it in at the very beginning. I did it here and started to work it in until I heard a click, 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 click that you know it's really anchored down in there. Then I brought the strap, that gasket, all the way over here and did the same thing on this end. Leave the plastic clip on, feel around inside there, get it all greased up, lubed up with the water-soluble hand lotion, 
press it in, listen for the click, move this rubber gasket in. Don't try to click this in afterwards, but you'll see the top is loose. Then work your way through this way as well so that you know this midsection is exactly where it needs to be because you're gonna get around this corner and you're gonna get around this corner and you're gonna hear this click, click, click as the gasket seats. And then, then right in here, it turns into a bitch. You're gonna have to start working really a little bit at a time, listening and rolling, kind of rolling, clicking, 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 clicking. Same thing over here, clicking, clicking, clicking. It's almost like the, the material is pointed that way instead of pointed up. So you're pulling in, but eventually, right when you're at a, you're heartbroken and you're thinking that one part's gonna be bulging out like this, the finally the last little piece goes click and it goes in. And you go, ah. Oh. So that's what it looks like in. It's a little snugger in here, a little snugger on the corners than it is right here, but it is seated all the way around. So I'm gonna leave it and we're gonna start putting on the sides. I was a little scared to put the top down, guys. I was having the same problem that Jason was. You saw him in the videos. He's climbing on top of the roof to try to get it down tight enough that he can latch it. I have left it for a solid week. Last Sunday, this top went on. Sunday, this top went on because I had my daughter and my daughter's boyfriend helping to pull it down and latch it in place and let it stretch. So I'm just hoping I'm going to be able to put this down. And this does look a lot better now. It had a chance to stretch right now that I think I could actually latch this in place on my own this time. So the week-long stretch did help. Next thing, we put in the gasket rails here and then start putting, or the weather stripping rails and start putting the weather stripping back. That table is getting less and less and less uh, stuff on it. It's exciting. Hey everybody, it's Mark Vo with another Z3 top replacement tip. I'm in the final stages. I'm putting this last little bit of weather gasket, of uh, weather stripping on. What you're gonna do is use water soluble lotion. You're gonna, in, you're gonna get it inside the grooves of the weather stripping. You're put it, gonna put it on the edge of the, the edge of the plastic you're trying to clip over. You're gonna leave the plastic clips right on both ends. You're gonna press these home from the very beginning and press down, let the lotion work for you. You'll hear a little click. Then you're gonna go over to the other side and you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna start here with the plastic on the weather stripping, the plastic clip, press it all in place, listen for the click, 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 and then you're gonna slowly work yourself around the corner all the way to this end, from this end, to this end, to this end, to this end, to this end, moving, moving, moving until you hear the click, and it's a really satisfying feeling. Come and check out my channel to see how I'm doing. Okay, guys, I've only got weather stripping to insert right here. So I'm as curious as you guys are. This is the scariest moment in the whole project. I'm gonna put the top all the way down. I'm gonna put the top all the way up and see if I can close it. If you think I'm nervous, you're absolutely right. <gasps> okay, the top's been stretching for a week. came loose. Let's pop it up for a second. Let's see if I can pull it back down. Last week I couldn't do it alone. I needed my daughter, on my adult daughter and her boyfriend pulling on both sides to get it to the point where they would, the, the hooks would engage. Let's see if I can engage it all by myself. So far so good. Stretching makes a huge difference. One week of stretching. Now, we're gonna put it all the way down, see what happens, put it all the way up. Here it goes. Looks pretty good. Let's see if it goes back up. Woo-hoo! 
Time to let the top down a little bit. Put the weather stripping holder on this little piece of linkage. Put the weather stripping on after I treat it with some rejuvenating oil and then we should be done. Wow, wow. Guys, I gotta tell you, I'm only pretending to be ecstatic. Mostly I'm relieved. That was the scariest part of the whole project. Why? Because man, if I did something wrong, it's gonna be a catastrophic failure. You're gonna hear something tear, rip, shred, and then tens of hours are gone. Hundreds of dollars, well, not hundreds, $182 for the top. Feels pretty good. This other part, putting this on, you guys don't need to see that, it's boring. I'll let you go back to Jason. If, I, if anything else interesting comes up, I'll be sure and tell you. Hey everybody, it's Mark Vo with one more last tip on a Z3 top replacement. Putting on the final weather stripping. Take a little bit of water-soluble hand lotion. Put it inside the groove right here. Put it inside the groove right here. Put it inside both grooves on the strips. And you'll see that it's going to pop right on. Because you've taken friction away. And getting weather stripping on... Friction is your only enemy. It is your number one enemy. Remove the friction, you remove the problem, and it goes in like butter. For this and other final tips, come and check out my channel. We'll see ya. Okay, guys, that wraps up the project. All the weather stripping went in. If you butter up both sides like I told you to, that goes in very, very easy. Even this tough piece goes in, and it all looks super nice. Let's talk about what I'm not doing. You see these three bows for the ceiling? I'm not putting those in yet. It's, this is going into storage for the winter. Uh, this windscreen, yeah, I'll probably put that in right now. And then there's a couple, three buttons. And there's this, the liner for the back. I'm not putting it in because you see how dirty it is? I got to figure out how to clean that. So those things are going to go in the trunk for the winter. Or until there's a super warm day or I figure something clever out. But for all intents and purposes, this is done. And it looks absolutely great. I think I've got to put some... i got to look on how to clean this. But the top came out so nice. The visibility, fantastic. Kudos to Maine Jason and to George for their help. you got to do three things, guys. you got to watch both of those videos. Jason's first. George's next. And as boring as it sounds, mine's going to be more than an hour long. You got to watch through those all in sync. Put them in three different browser tabs and just keep playing them and keep up, keep up, keep up. Because every one of them has got something important that you're going to be really glad you listen to. But the end result is a super nice top. Time to take it for a spin. See ya. Okay, guys. <coughs> Here's the Z3 project with a brand new top. And everything looks amazing. But what everybody, what I haven't seen anybody talk about, Jason's pretty honest. I like that about him. Everybody's got to talk about what it costs them. For me, everybody's got mistakes. This one was mine. There's one washer, one of the 15 that go across the back and hold the whole back canopy over. Somehow that washer fell out on the ground. I don't know why, but I'm missing one washer. I can live with that. That's a small cost. The one that hurt the most is that. This material and this top was so brittle after 25 years. I leaned on it a little bit and it broke like an eggshell. That lid, that lid is 290 plus dollars even on eBay for a black one. They don't even make the plastic, the, the tan ones anymore. I can't find them to save my soul. So I'll be watching all winter long for that. But I'm also, I've got all the pieces. I'm going to be trying to figure out how to, how to patch this so that at least it looks manageable. The last thing, uh, it cost me my clear coat. Putting tape down on here to hold the, the stuff down. Peeled up part of my clear coat. But you guys have seen other videos. That happened. And last but not least, 
this needs cleaning. I'm not putting it in yet, not till spring. There's just no point. It's gonna, I gotta figure out a way to clean that and then I drop it in. But let's watch the top go up and down. So I'm gonna set up for that and you get to see what this is really all about. Okay, let me go start it up. That's what this is all about. Can you put a top on that works? Or do you have to pay somebody else $2,000 to do it for you? Pretty nice. I'm pretty proud. Big thanks to Jason and George. Guys, you two guys, the videos that you put together, you have no idea how many people you impacted, how many people end up with nice Z3 projects that they didn't throw away all because of the work that you guys put into your video. Hats off to you. Hopefully you guys find a little bit of value in my video too so that you end up being able to do this yourself.